Aleluya. Aleluya. Glory, glory be to Jesus. Good evening, everybody. It is truly my joy to be in Enugu again. Hallelujah. And I believe with all my heart that God has brought us here tonight, one more time, and all through this conference to do us good in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Now, just two things very quickly. Number one, um, I sincerely want to take the time to celebrate and honor every father, every veteran of the gospel while standing. I'd like us to honor every man and woman of God in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you. I will tell you why I said for us to celebrate these graces. The spiritual health of any city is a reflection of the labor, seen and unseen, of the men, the women, the vessels of God. Hallelujah. In this city, there are intercessors, seen and unseen. In this city, there are prophets, seen and unseen. In this city, there are teachers, seen and unseen. In this city, there are apostles, seen and unseen. So that you have this level of interest for God, it's not just because God brought a great man to this place, it is because there are people who labor day and night. Some of them have lost their lives even while doing what they do. Some of them have sacrificed their everything for the name of Jesus to be preserved. And the Bible says, them that rule well should be counted for double honor. One more time, let's honor the servants of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. One, one, of the things, one of the things that I will never do is to come into a city and downplay the sacrifices and the relevance of the vessels of the Lord within that city. I am only here for two days and I leave. But these are the people that continue, that build. I sincerely want to thank you secondly for the honor that you have shown me right from the airport. Um, the Bishop, PFN Chairman now, and all of the marshals and the officials, you have shown me profound honor and I do not take it for granted. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Reverend Dan, to you and your wife, may God bless you. Incredible grace. Hallelujah. You will go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. And sir, thank you so much representing the body of Christ. Thank you for the honor. I do not take it for granted. Are we ready for tonight? Let's lift our hands and our voices and cry desperately for an encounter. Desperately for an encounter. Desperately for an encounter. Desperately for an encounter. Pray and ask the Lord to give you a radical transformation and encounter by His Spirit. Give me an encounter. Take my ministry to another dimension. Take the work that you have given me. Let your hand upon this land be multiplied as far as impact is concerned. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you will help us tonight. We receive wisdom by the Spirit. Spirit of the living God, we yield ourselves that you find unrestrained access in this place. Raise men, empower men, grant us light even by your word. 
and to Jesus be all the glory. Amen and amen. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap and then please be seated. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I have a number of things that we're going to be discussing in the course of this conference and I'm sure that you know that it is God's desire that every time there be these kinds of apostolic and prophetic convergence that moves beyond the boundaries of church denominationalism this was the kinds of meetings that brought what we call the epistles of Paul he summoned people regardless their prejudices about the things of God and began to teach them on the things that would make them of stature this was the protocol of the early church in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the Bible says they continued steadfastly in the Apostles doctrine and in breaking of bread in fellowship and in prayer hallelujah they continued steadfastly and so I really want to salute all of us again because the things you are about to hear by the Spirit of the Living God are designed to equip us this is why he gave on to some apostles he gave on to some prophets evangelists pastors and teachers the Bible says for the equipping the maturing of the saints that the saints being matured will do the work of the ministry that all together we come into the fullness of the stature the measure the stature of Christ he says not to stow and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive so we're here to explore the Word of God and let me plead that you lend me and lend your destiny your undivided attention in the parable of the sower the same seed fell on all the grounds but the quality the yield some literally had zero yield and the Bible talks about the soil being the heart of men that the one on good ground represented those who heard and then understood and even among them that understood they had three kinds of results some 30 fold some 60 fold and others a hundred fold hallelujah I've come with a burden from the spirit God has given me a mandate especially in this season not just to regions but to nations there is something God is doing across regions there is something God is doing across nations there is a reorientation that God is bringing to the body of Christ that is positioning us for that which he seeks to do before he returns and it matters that we have that understanding in Acts chapter 26 and verse 19 when Paul stood before Agrippa in defense of his faith he began to tell them the story of his encounter and he said Acts chapter 26 and verse 19 that I was not negligent where upon O King Agrippa he said I was not negligent to the heavenly vision you can receive a mandate from the Lord and then abort that mandate through carelessness through pride through insensitivity he says say unto Archippus that you take heed to the ministry that thou hast received in the Lord that thou fulfill it receiving it is only one part of the equation fulfilling it is another part of the equation when Jesus came he came with a sense of unbending focus and urgency and he said I must walk the walks of him that sent me he said whilst it is day that means there is timing to this assignment every time is not convenient he says for the night cometh when no man can walk again hallelujah and so we're going to be dealing with three things in the course of this conference and I just want to state it so that um, we have an appreciation of what God is doing in our lives hallelujah I believe that one of the things that God is doing across the nations of the earth is helping men understand his prophetic end time program please let me your attention God wants people to know what he is doing now 
it is important for us to know it says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith that means not everybody has that kind of ear Habakkuk said I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower that I will see what he will say unto me and it's important for us to know everybody who will be relevant in today's world from a spiritual standpoint must be able to have a thorough understanding of God's program in the course of this conference many of us especially laborers in the gospel God is going to be explaining for us the basis of our various frustrations even as we preach the gospel because your satisfaction and your fulfillment only comes to the degree to which you align yourself with this program are we together I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So God desires for nations and people to understand his prophetic program in this season. And you see, I have, I think in one of the sessions that we had in this city, I told you that there are three levels of the anointing when it has to do with the dealings of God with men. Number one, the Bible says that there is the anointing that comes to the believer on account of your being grafted into Christ. He calls it the anointing within you. It's an engracing of the spirit that helps you to live the victorious Christian life. The serious problem. You will be surprised that it will not affect the delivery as far as your office is concerned. Hallelujah. This was the tragedy of people like Samson. The power that was upon Samson was not just a product of the health of his consecration. There was a mandate upon him. And even when something was getting wrong with his personal life, he still had the strength to remove a city gate and take it up the mountain. But the third kind of anointing is very rare. Very few people are able to carry it in a generation. That is not an anointing that just comes because of your being grafted into Christ. That is not an anointing that just comes because of your office. It is the anointing that comes as a reward for discerning and aligning with God's current program. Hallelujah. That every time through the sacrifice of alignment, when a man, that is the whole idea of the word consecration. The word consecration has two expressions. Number one, it means abstinence from. Number two, it means devotion unto. So when you talk about consecration, it talks about two things. Abstinence from, then devotion unto. Are we together? So understanding the prophetic blueprint of the Spirit can end you an opportunity to be able to carry very superior levels of graces. This is what I believe has distinguished people even within the body of Christ. Because the same Lord is rich unto all. But our possibilities do not just depend on his love but our various levels of alignment so that if god wants to do this and that in the southeast this and that in enugu state those who will pay the price by the spirit to hear and understand what god is doing and to make themselves available they are the kinds of people who carry this third level of the anointing hallelujah Jesus himself called the 12. You would think they would all operate at the same level of grace. They were all ordained by the same Jesus, yet their results differed. Mentored by the same Jesus. All of them were with Jesus. So there should, no, there should be no reason for the disparity in results. Hallelujah. Out of the many apostles, they did many great things, but there were a few who stood out. Number one was Peter. Number two was Paul. Number three was John the Beloved. Remove their contribution in the New Testament and you are left with total ignorance about the program of God. 
Now, other, other contributions are there, but you extract the contribution of Peter, extract the contribution of Paul, and extract the contribution of John, and you are left in total ignorance as to God's program. These men labored more than all to bring in perspective to the believer. They were the ones who brought the many things that Jesus said, I have many things to show you, but ye cannot bear them now. Imagine studying the gospel without the epistles. Jesus never taught us that we were exalted on high and seated in heavenly places. Jesus never even taught us to arrange the satanic kingdom in that organogram. It was Apostle Paul who brought perspective to the believer's experience so that the gospel becomes a foundation for your understanding. But the epistles become what gives you stature and balance. We never knew there was anything called the word of knowledge. We only knew the Holy Spirit. That was what Jesus taught. It was Paul that said, sit down, let me teach you. There is, as it were, diverse gifts, albeit by the same spirit. So what did they touch that gave them this edge in the spirit? There is a grace that responds to alignment. Are we learning already? So that we do not blindly assume that just because God is moving, anointing men, that automatically because we're in Christ, I, I, I have i have taught and you may have heard me say that not everything in the kingdom is a gift there are things that are rewards in fact the bible calls god himself in hebrews 11 verse 6 the rewarder it is a name it is not just what he does the rewarder in the book of revelations he says i have my reward with me hallelujah and so we're going to be looking at three things in the course of this conference number one by the Spirit of God, we're going to be understanding God's prophetic program for the nations and God's prophetic program for the Southeast. What is God doing in the Southeast? What is the role that the Southeast has to play as far as God's prophetic program is concerned? Number two, we're going to be learning the kind of believer that will be used by God to execute that assignment because it is very clear from Scripture that many can be called but very few are chosen we see that adumbrated in the story of gideon that when gideon blew the shofar 33,000 people were called but out of them only 300 people were chosen and there were certain conditions that began to break the list down two of them that's not my teaching today but it's important for you to know that just because you are called does not qualify you to be sent no empowerment is at the point where you are sent not at the point where you are called 12 disciples were called but it was not 12 disciples that were sent one made himself the son of perdition and jesus had to account for his fall he says all that you have given me john 17 i have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture be fulfilled are we together so it's important for us to know the kind of believer. Up front, let me tell you this. Every name you call in the Bible, whether you call Abraham, you call Isaac, you call Elijah, you call Esther, they are not just the names of individuals. The names in the Bible are spiritual pathways that produce a certain kind of believer. Are we together now? So when you say Elijah, there is Elijah as a person but there is Elijah as the name, a capture of a spiritual pathway that if followed will produce a certain kind of believer. When you say Gideon, Gideon is not just the name of one who was valiant in battle and defeated the Midianites. Gideon is also a capture of a spiritual pathway that produces a certain kind of believer one of the ways you will know the holy spirit is working with you is because as he trains you you will start finding your parallel in scripture there must be a pathway he's following with you that begins to parallel the dealing of someone in scripture so there is a way god can begin to train you that you will see that this training is leading to esther there is a way god begins to train you that you know this training is leading to paul there is a way God is training you that you will know this training is leading to Ruth. 
there are general principles by which God raises people but there are unique pathways that are only allocated for the individual destinies this is the reason why in following people to evolve there are two rules of engagement number one follow them who through faith and patience number two looking unto Jesus because there are certain pathways that are virgin pathways no matter how properly mentored only the Holy Ghost can navigate you through that path is someone learning already yes all of this this is just a preamble to what we're going to be discussing tomorrow we must know the kinds of believers that God wants to use most Christians donate themselves in blindness and ignorance and say God use me as sincere as that is to be available is only one of the requirements to be used by God. There were many available vessels in the Bible that were not used by God. The narrative we have received is once you are available, God will use you. That is not correct. Read your Bible. There were many people who gave themselves sincerely but were never used by God because there are conditions. Nevertheless, the Bible says, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal, that the Lord knoweth them that are his. Then it says, let every man that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Then it now says, in a great house, there are four kinds of vessels. Is that in your Bible? It says there are vessels of gold, silver, wood, and clay. Some vessels are unto dishonor, and some vessels are unto dishonor, are unto honor yet it is still called a great house it is not the vessels that make the house great it is the builder that makes the house great are we learning now so it is possible that there are many many sincere believers who may not be captured in the prophetic scheme of what god is doing across the nations and this will not be a demonic attack is that many have not been methodically mentored to understand what God is looking for there is a certain kind of man that God is looking for Elijah I mean um, Isaiah was always available but he was not usable right from Isaiah chapter 1 the book begins by a man prophesying he was not a fake prophet he was never charged with falsehood yet in chapter 6 there was still a call who will go for us and the same man who had been prophesying said here am i send me so you are tempted to ask who sent him from chapter one to five that he was prophesying just because activities are happening within a region does not mean you are sent hallelujah praise the name of the lord so please i want you to lend me your attention as god helps us and then number three the third thing we'll be considering in the course of this conference is how to be the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and it says great grace was upon them all with great power it takes power to bear witness to the resurrection of the lord jesus christ first power to become then power to do then power against power to become is what is responsible for furnishing the character of the Christ in you power to do is the grace for performance power against is the grace that keeps you standing just because you are empowered power is in dimensions the Bible lists various levels and phases of power he gave them power to become there is power to do there is power against he says haven't done all to stand stand it takes power to stand it takes power to remain that regardless the onslaughts of darkness against you on account of your weakness if you are not empowered to stand reminds me of Ephesians 6 and verse 10 it says finally brethren the apostle is speaking he says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might be strong in the Lord hallelujah praise the name of the Lord So let's look at God's end time program. What is God interested in doing in Enugu, in the Southeast, in Nigeria? We're having a discussion um, with Reverend House on the Rock uh, briefly when I arrived and he was saying, Apostle, it looks like there are mighty things that God is doing from Nigeria to the nations. And I said, you are correct, sir. 
one of the graces one of the unique privileges that God has given us is that in this prophetic move of God it has so pleased the Lord by his spirit that Nigeria and this country and this region would play a spearheading role in revealing a very correct picture of the Lord Jesus to the nations it is listen it is an it is a responsibility it is not something to brag about in fact if you understand what I just said it should make you cry because it then means it then means that the destiny of many have been tied to individuals tied to men of God and we must have a covenant that Lord if it is under my watch by your grace I will not fail hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now the prophetic program of God generally as revealed from scripture and then as revealed by the spirit in these days was designed to affect three groups of people the prophetic program of God was designed to affect three groups of people number one the world of sinners or unbelievers the first group that God's prophetic program targets is the world of sinners or unbelievers as we call it number two the second group that the prophetic program of God targets is the church believers themselves these are the second group of people as far as God's prophetic program is concerned and then the third group represents the entire society territories communities civilizations let me repeat myself one last time that God's prophetic program is designed to affect three groups of people number one the world of sinners number two the church number three society it's important that you have this holistic capture in understanding God's program many times when we deal with matters that relate to the Great Commission we bring isolated scriptures and they bring lopsided understanding you see when you are dealing with scripture it says and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture which is able to make you wise are we together you know um, it's important that we are holistic in our capture of Scripture so when the Bible talks about the Great Commission for the average believer if you ask the average believer what is the Great Commission the only thing they will tell you is that souls should be won and that that is not wrong but that is very very incomplete hallelujah for you to understand the Great Commission you must look at Mark 16 Matthew 28 and Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2 these are the scriptures that must be put together to produce the complete picture of the Great Commission when you read Mark chapter 16 and verse 15 Jesus himself was speaking and he said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel he said to every creature go ye into all the world preach the gospel to every creature are we together so you see that from Mark's synoptic account using his perspective you would think that the only thing he was asked was to go and preach but when you now bring Matthew's perspective in Matthew 28 from verse 18 down to 20 he says all authority the word power there is the Greek word exousia all authority the capacity to represent me has been given in heaven and the earth has been given he says go ye therefore and he mandated them to disciple nations he didn't say just go and teach are we together that you should go and disciple nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you so it takes more than preaching the Great Commission has a preaching dimension to declare to announce to proclaim but it has a teaching dimension to bring men into an awareness of a reality it does not happen just by proclaiming you will need to teach all it says teaching them to observe everything are we together and then when you now go to the third dimension that is found in Acts chapter 1 and verse 6 it says but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me he never mentions names he mentions cities and territories Jerusalem is not the name of a person 
Judea is not the name of a person. Samaria is not the name of the person. The uttermost part of the earth is not the name of a person. So it affects people, unbelievers. It affects the church and it must, there must be a context of the Great Commission that translates into transforming territories. If you are with me, say amen. amen. It is dangerous for an individual to be saved and yet his territory is unsafe. An example of such in the Bible was the man Lot. Lot was a righteous man, but Sodom and Gomorrah was a dangerous place. And even though he was a righteous man, his life was still at risk. It matters that salvation permeates the territory, not just the individual. You can be a good man in the midst of a wicked world. It will still affect your efficiency. You would think that because Lot was a righteous man, it should automatically immune him. Look what those people were going to do. Lot was willing to give two of his daughters and destroy their destiny because of the moral decadence within a nation. It took the angels to drive those girls in. Otherwise, those men would have destroyed those ladies. Yet, that donation happened by the pressure that was on a righteous man in an immoral world. Are we together? This is the apostolic dimension of the Great Commission that must be understood. You see, and I say this with all due respect, um, our lopsidedness in understanding God's program is what has translated to the limitations that we see in our lives, the limitations that we see in our assemblies, and the limitations that we see in territory. For the most part, the average believer is not mentored to see that he has relevance as far as territory is concerned. And there is a history to that error. When you study church history, there was once upon a time under the leadership of a vicious emperor called Nero. Are we together? Where believers were martyred. They barely survived days. As soon as they were saved, in, within 24, 72 hours they died. So for them, the concept of nation building, the concept of maturity and stature was not there. It was just remaining strong until you were martyred. Then when you read fast forward a time of another emperor called Constantine, when Constantine came by a vision that he had, a strategy was invented through that vision and it brought victory for the people against their enemies, their adversaries. And because of that, Constantine passed a decree that the Christian faith should no longer be persecuted. So here are believers who had a history of dying immediately they were saved. Matired in gruesome ways. Now they had been given the liberty to live. They did not have any relevance to society because the mindset they had was the mindset of matiredom. Are we together now? And that mindset is still at work in the church until today. It has robbed us of the opportunity to be light and salt. Jesus never said we are believers alone. In Matthew chapter 5, teaching in what we call the Beatitudes from verse 13 to 16, he says, ye are the salt of the earth. So our relevance is beyond just one-on-one -on -one evangelism. There is a context to God's program that must, that must affect and influence society. Are we together? Can I tell you, one of the reasons why, with all due respect, many men are frustrated, men of God especially, Saturdays represent the most frustrating moments for many preachers because they are at a loss as to what to preach on Sunday. It takes understanding for you to create sermons after 20 years of ministry. You most likely would have exhausted everything you can find in the Bible. What will keep you relevant is an understanding of God's program. What we largely do as ministers is to just invent anything we feel we have not taught before. So there is a random application of knowledge that is leading. It's not synergized to produce a certain kind of believer. When you understand the program of God, a lecturer has been lecturing for 30 years, but but his edge is that he's repeating the same curriculum but with freshness so you can produce predictable graduates because the body of knowledge that trains them is not a guesswork it will be a risk to send your child to a man who does not have the end of the picture in view and he comes per lecture and says what have we done today and then he brings a 600 level course to a 100 level student then gives him another he random mixes the courses at the end of it the student is in class but there is no growth are we understanding now 
So what we call church service should be a continuation of an intentional program understood by the preacher and understood by the members. Is God helping us? Let's look at the global harvest for tonight. God's program, the global harvest. Please do not miss all the sessions. I believe with all my spirit that God is doing a very mighty work. I took out time to pray and to ask the Lord that for the sake of one person who has been sent by God in this conference, who must be positioned to represent his purposes with power, that God will visit his people with great grace. I truly believe that there are people you were sent by God here. You didn't just come because you were aware of a program. Your coming here is proof that you are representing the nameless, faceless people connected to your destiny. And for their sake, I plead that you lend me your rapt attention. Let's discuss the global harvest. Matthew chapter 9, please, from verse 36. This is the first dimension of God's prophetic program. If you are asking what God is doing now, across the nations, now, in Enugu state, now, across the east of the Niger, I'm telling you by the authority of scripture and from the lens of the prophetic that this is God's prophetic blueprint in the now. But when he saw the multitudes, okay, I have it here. The Bible says he was moved with compassion because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. His response, he said to the disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous. Please read the remaining line. But the laborers are few. One more time. But the laborers are few. One more time. But the laborers... So in the mind of Jesus, the problem with the global harvest is not the size of the harvest. It's not the stubbornness of the harvest. It's the inefficiency of the laborers. In the mind of Jesus, he's saying every sinner is a potential harvest not about to be ripe is already a harvest and he's saying if you find out that the global harvest ever suffers the problem is not the stubbornness of that child the problem is not the called person the problem is the inefficiency of the sickle that should bring the harvest the harvest truly is plenteous and then he says the laborers are few. Jesus is diagnosing the condition now as far as the global harvest is concerned. He's telling us that it is not because the gentleman there cannot be saved. It is not because the prostitute is so hardened. He's saying there's something wrong with the vessel. If the axe head is blunt, he says there will be much energy. But he does not leave us with the diagnosis alone. The next verse tells us his recommendation. 38 he says give us verse 38 media pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest the lord of the harvest is the holy spirit he is the one with the mandate of seeing the the, uh, the overseer of this project called kingdom come is the holy spirit the general overseer of this project called kingdom come is the holy spirit he is the shorty the reason why we know the project will not fail hallelujah and he says pray ye the lord of the harvest that he will send forth he never said that he would talk to the harvest he said he, he said he would send forth laborers into his field all across your city all across nigeria all across africa it seems like evil and decadence is growing in strength spreading in the midst of the many churches respectfully speaking spreading in the midst of the many conferences spreading in the midst of the many crusades and god is saying every time the harvest looks difficult the laborers must take responsibility that there is something about the inefficiency of laborers i don't have the time would have considered many models of laborers in scripture and you'll find out that there were men who were so sharpened and chiseled they took cities in one day let me give you one example acts chapter 8 please the bible says from verse 5 there was a strange evangelist called philip and the bible says philip went down to the city of samaria philip went to a city not just a church 
he entered a city as a single man and the bible says he preached christ notice the content of his message he did not preach self he preached christ unto them the bible says the people gave heed verse 6 now with one accord to the things which philip spake why did they pay attention to what he was saying hearing and seeing the miracles which he did what miracles next verse the bible says for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of them that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies were lame that were lame were healed as a result there was great joy not in the church there was great joy in the whole city because of the effective witness of one man are we together listen to me enugu can be saved in a moment i used to hear reinhard bonke of blessed memory i would stand in the crowd watching him in his crusade and he will shout sometimes sobbing almost to tears that africa shall be saved he did his best and he's now gone to join the cloud of witnesses and the Bible mandates that we follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Enugu State, in addition to the many churches that we have, and I have taken time to appreciate the vessels of the Lord, I can tell you that there is a cry in the heart of God. The cry in the heart of God is not just for more programs. The cry in the heart of God is not just for more conferences. The cry in the heart of the Lord is not just for ministry expansion as it were. The first true burden, the cry of the spirit, is to see that the global harvest. Did you know the average, with all due respect, the average believer is not harvest conscious? And that is a product of the kind of mentorship that we've submitted ourselves to. So we generally leave it to a few zealous evangelists. And altar calls are usually made just as a way of easing guilt to not look like you are not spiritual. So we casually call people and it's clear that those who are coming out don't even know why they are coming out. You see the unseriousness at the altar and at the end of it they say amen. Amen is not what saves. No. Saying amen does not translate to salvation. Sample the average man of God in a territory. And with all due respect interview the person and say articulate for me with intelligence what the gospel of salvation is you will be left in tears how do you bring people into an experience that you do not understand yourself get the average believer and I'm saying this with all due respect you, you know that if I pick people from every row seated here now and I say stand here give them a mic let me know what let me know your thoughts and your understanding as to what the gospel is what exactly is the gospel of salvation isn't it amazing that we know what prosperity is with all due respect isn't it amazing that we know what breakthrough is isn't it amazing that we know what speed is we know what restoration is and yet the greatest message that will save a man that will bring him into the kingdom and give him the potential to become an effective witness is seldom known seldom taught seldom understood let me show you what the gospel is first corinthians 15 first corinthians 15 and the first four verses let's do bible study now generally speaking let me teach you something please believers please hear me there are three layers to the study of scripture this is from a theological standpoint now every time you study scripture there are three layers of study the first layer of study is called a historic slash archaeological layer because the bible is a historic material are we together yes so there is history and archaeology captured in these 66 books i hope you know by now that there are many other books that were written by the saints that did not make it into these 66 books they were not canonized there is the book of Joshua. there are the annals of the kings there is the dead screen scroll there is the book of enoch i say all of this because the bible also makes reference to these books but for many reasons, the Bible lets us know that what is written here is sufficient for any believer in partnership with the Holy Spirit to understand God and understand his program. You find that in John 21, John 20 and verse 30, it says many miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which were not recorded in this book. 31 now says, but this is recorded that ye might believe 
that is the son of God and that in believing you will have life eternal 31 now so what is recorded is sufficient enough to help you know God and help you learn God as far as the curriculum of knowing God that has been allotted to our generation and this dispensation is concerned are we still together so I said that there are three layers to the study of scripture the first is a historic and archaeological layer that means when you study scripture it's important that you backdate your mind and try to look from the lens of archaeology and the lens of history it will bring many things to perspective are we together number two there is the theological layer of scripture and this demands training this demands soundness you have to be sound as far as the theological construct of scripture is concerned if not you are not going to be balanced and your teaching will be lopsided largely a communication of opinions it is the theological understanding of scripture that births what we call doctrine it comes from the latin word doctrina it means a set of belief that was designed to translate a student to become like his teacher are we together so when the bible says that they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine there was a set of rules a set of beliefs that were communicated that produced mighty men there is a theological layer to scripture balance intelligence stature resides within this realm of teaching when you understand the theological construct of scripture then you can compare scripture with scripture and when you teach people you can predict what they will become because of your theological soundness unfortunately especially with all due respect um, there is a growing generation of people who have downplayed the value of theology and the understanding of the doctrinal construct of scripture simply because of things like signs and wonders so it does not matter the rubbish i teach once someone falls down it is an attestation we think that everything i communicated is right and i'm not being sarcastic so you find out that there is a lot of charismatism around our circles but there is no transformation and there is no growth number three there is the prophetic layer to scripture this again is the limitation of theology there is a prophetic layer to the study of scripture this one is between you and the Holy Spirit because one of the assignments of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer is to be a revealer John 16 from verse 8 down to 12 it says I have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them how be it when he the spirit of truth is come that he will guide you into all truth and that he will reveal to you he will show you the things that should come first corinthians chapter 2 when you read 10 and 11 the bible says but god had revealed it to us by his spirit for the spirit searched all things yea the deep things of god there are things in scripture that you can study from an archaeological layer a theological layer but then you get to a point where a revelation will come out of it that only you can see that is the prophetic dimension of scripture and to the layman who has not been given that light it will look like you are in error but the results will show that there was something you caught that only you caught now the danger is that you don't turn that prophetic encounter into a doctrine you will mislead people however for you it has come as rema it will be a secret of profound victory are we together for many of you who have followed my teachings let me give you one example I I give only one example because I don't want people to coin a lot of error Galatians 2 2 Paul was speaking to the church in Galatia and he made a very profound expression he said I went up by revelation give it to us and I went up by revelation so he was speaking about his journey from a theological standpoint when you read it contextually it was just a continuation of a statement that I traveled by insight that means God told me to go to this place but God can bring a prophetic dimension of it read the first six words please ready one to read one more time this can come for you as a rema 
that men rise in life because of the revelation that they have access to now you see it is out of context theologically speaking but prophetically it has become a word for you and this revelation can drive you now to go and fast to now study are we together now someone can be looking for where a church land should be and you can stand reading your bible and all of a sudden you will hear a scripture that says ye have encompassed this mountain long enough turn you not words that is not a scripture about location of church but for you it has come as a prophetic word and not what literally will be where your church land is so we do not limit out the bible is a spiritual book and so we do not just limit it to its theological construct there is an allowance by the spirit where men can draw light from scripture for instance i hope you know that the the revelation of jonah entering the belly of the fish until jesus arrived we know that scripture to be punishment of a prophet who was running away from god but jesus now came and gave us a prophetic meaning that it was not just a punishment of a man it was an adumbration of the death burial and resurrection how can a prophet's punishment have a prophetic meaning to the saints are we together Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. So we're discussing the global harvest in Romans 1 and verse 16 the Bible says Paul speaking to the church in Rome he says I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ he says for it is the power of God unto salvation first he says to the Jews first and also the Greek so the gospel is the power of God unto salvation Romans chapter 10 please 13 and 14 please follow carefully Romans 10 13 14 Romans 10 help us media 13 14 Romans chapter 10 do I pull it up from here okay it says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved when it has to do with salvation that blessing is for whosoever there are blessings in the kingdom that the Bible will say he gave unto some salvation is not one of them whosoever is qualified this is the reason why in God's mind there is no excuse why the harvest because it is it was simple enough for whosoever to participate in it whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved let's look at verse 14 14 he said how then this is the problem I like Paul Paul is diagnosing the situation that how then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher I like 15 and how shall they preach except they be sent listen question sent by who because the Bible says in your prayer it is the Lord of the harvest that sends laborers not just an ordination service it is the Lord of the harvest so it says how shall they how shall they go except they be sent you can choose to move but it is far different from being sent hallelujah is someone learning because you see in God's dealings with people every time God calls a man he does not send you he calls you to himself then he sends you to the world he calls you to himself God never calls a man to an assignment no he calls you to himself he called them that they should be with him and then that he might send them when you are called you are called to him not it it is from the abundance of your encounter when he called Moses he did not call Moses to Egypt he called Moses to himself then he sent Moses to Egypt that is the protocol God calls men to himself and then he sends them 
to wherever it is that is the geography of your assignment now hear me please it means that if God can find sufficient laborers in Enugu if God can find sufficient laborers in the east of the Niger I can tell you there is sufficient power within his economy to bring and dismantle every curse dismantle every yoke it is not the curses that are so powerful that program families into failure the the power of those curses is a reflection of the weakness of the laborers are we together it's an uncomfortable truth but we must believe it there is no divination and no enchantment no generational cause and no programming of darkness that should stand the power of God but you see the power of God is manifested through the hands of vessels a vessel can misrepresent the power of God if I have a tap imagine with me that this is a tap that has running water from the dam and I open it a bit just to drop water you see that that tap is misrepresenting the potential of the dam you put a bucket there it will take ages for the bucket to be filled yet there is potential as far as the provision of the dam is concerned to fill that bucket sometimes in seconds I believe that in the course of this conference that glory grace from heaven will rest upon someone in this place that in the name of Jesus your witness will become so efficient cities can be taken in moments depending on the dimension of grace and power that we carry please sit down hallelujah I can tell you that the churches in Enugu the men and women of God in Enugu the vast army that God has in Enugu if everybody understands the burden of the Lord as far as the global harvest is concerned there will be no space for darkness you see when he says we are light and salt I'll talk a bit on that tomorrow light does not have to be everywhere to shine everywhere no the light that is shining across this stage everybody see but the light is not directly on you it just needs to be in a point and to be allowed to shine how about salt I was teaching my precious people on Sunday you don't cook rice I mean soup and then you put salt ratio one to one of the vegetables is that how it works no sometimes for a whole plate a pinch of salt is enough to create that effect so when God says you are salt don't complain about numbers can I tell you if unbelievers must match believers for impact to happen you are not salt because one person look at the allocation of lands by Caleb and Joshua they literally allocated lands as if there were no giants there you this tribe this is your portion go and dismantle the people most of us do not know the kind of power look Paul was praying in Ephesians chapter 1 when we get to verse 19 he prayed that the church will know the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe hallelujah to understand the kind of power that has been invested in the believer man of God as far as God's program is concerned Enugu state please listen to me precious people of God the days that are coming will no longer be church and ministry and Christianity as usual no God's desire is to transform members from believers and members congregants and fans into witnesses there is a translation and it must be radically done because the king's business requires haste we have to graduate from celebrating the presence of loyal congregants into training people with an exact curriculum by the spirit of god to understand the ways of god that transition must happen in the spirit there are many congregants but there are few witnesses few witnesses and the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, it says, With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Witness is not for members. No, members cannot bear witness. They can just be loyal to a man of God and whatever it is that he has to present. It then means, 
an uncomfortable truth but this is true that the spiritual health of any territory is a reflection of the quality of spiritual voices within that territory as far as their spiritual orientation is concerned this is why i have profound respect and regard for every man of god who has left his busy schedule every woman of god in your various capacities you have left everything that you had to do just to come and sit down and listen and learn it takes a lot of humility but it also shows that you have love for the land you see because a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep there is nothing to be ashamed of if there is an area i do not know and i cannot see i must throw away pride and open up myself for the sake of the sheep that are depending on my transformation there will be a reflection of my weakness or my efficiency and so we must look beyond ourselves and focus on the sheep of the lord jesus christ hallelujah i had a vision many years ago in that vision i was in an elevated position and i saw an endless sea of people they were crying and they were weeping crying and sobbing the vision was so real to me and then the people who were in front it was like the image just zoomed to me and while they were crying um i asked why they were crying and i could hear them whispering they said there is no food and no water it was as if that entire generation was being starved of food and water and i said who is the cause and they unanimously pointed their hands and i said no i can't be that evil i can't watch you you're starving and then i have a means of helping you i made up my mind and i said you know what i'm coming to rescue you but it became in that vision that there were people who were persecuting me and it was out of here i was hiding in that room but I made up my mind like Esther. I said, if I perish, I would perish. As soon as I opened the door, there was a giant gray bearded man wearing white. Now you know that was the Lord of the harvest, the spirit of the Lord himself. He stretched forth his giant hands and he said, place your hands on my hand. He said, I will walk with you. Let's go. And we began to move from place to place, jumping. I, I needed to jump from one building to the other. I was too small in that vision I couldn't jump so he would take that giant step and then he would wait for me to slowly come and he was smiling with patience listen I shared this for a reason I can tell you this there is something that God is doing and if believers do not rise he will start using another strategy because by all means men must be saved help those under the anointing I just saw wind as I just mentioned that word wind I started seeing wind because we, we celebrate the prophetic but one of the burden that God is placing upon people is that grace is an evangelistic dimension with power power that you will bear witness to the truth with such capacity and grace it will not just be about being a pastor with members how many people today 10 years they have never preached to their drivers their drivers are just driving their house helps are not saved yet they in the same office the person editing the book they are writing on salvation is not saved and they don't care because that person is just an administrator hallelujah can i tell you the truth the people you call god's generals were first god's evangelists do not covet their power if you do not want their assignment we have a lazy generation that is not interested in doing the work of God, but we want the power that should follow one who does the work of God, simply for the purpose of self-aggrandizement. The ones you call God's generals were first God's missionaries, God's emissaries. <laughs> hallelujah and when it has to do with the global harvest it is not an assignment for pastors this is the problem we have mentored a generation to believe that you put a large crusade and then everybody who has potential to bring souls is at the mercy of one great man of God called Joshua Selman and his arrival is equal to the arrival of salvation you see that now so our idea is to keep preparing platforms for just one one people one one people and it is aborting the efficiency of that mission 
the assignment is to let people know when it has to do with a sal with salvation you do not need a great it, it is when it has to do with mentoring and maturing the saints this is when you need vessels that have been prepared to teach line upon line precept upon precept so when we organize crusades you see many believers who say you know what we want to organize crusades then we go and bring one powerful man of god pay for his flight i'm not saying there's anything wrong in that i'm saying it is just how how bad our orientation has been so those souls are at the mercy of the arrival of that man and if joshua selman decides to be too proud to come and says i'm not coming those souls remain at the mercy of one man's arrogance Yet you read your Bible, everybody Paul saw was a potential harvest. In prison, when they bound him, he was not thinking about his release. He was thinking about the person to be saved. Are we together? As soon as they were free, listen, as I'm talking to you, there is an impartation of a grace that will come upon your spirit, man. That you will never see unbelievers and be quiet. There is a fire that burns within your spirit. your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected King is resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected King is resurrecting me by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king isn't it amazing that we have played politics with the global harvest isn't it amazing we have played celebrity with the global harvest apostle joshua selman the great man of god you can talk about that with respect to other things but not the salvation of souls that business is too serious for the carnality and unseriousness and childishness that continues to plague ministry there are people today who should not have gone to hell but they have gone to hell because the person mandated to be the reason for their salvation watch them in carelessness how many campus students graduated without fulfilling the quota of the salvation that was allotted to them how many prayer groups how many men of god did you know that god measures a thousand cubits there is an allocation of souls that everybody who desires to be a laborer is given part time and per season don't show me the building you are trying to build thank you but leave that is secondary don't show me the project don't show me the car you want to buy thank god for it show me how many souls daily show me how many souls weekly show me how many souls monthly listen look at me if you bring a soul winner today that nobody knows on social media a soul winner today who is not a celebrity and you bring him to stand here and then you bring Joshua Selman, the one that people praise the Lord. Thank you. Are we together now? So you bring a serious soul winner, no influence, no crowd, nobody knows him no honorarium and then you bring joshua selman the great man of god chances are excellent that when you look at two of us honor is accorded to the celebrity people that you see and it has put pressure on people many people who were getting it right have turned to start getting it wrong because there is a narrative we are giving 
that if men do not celebrate you and you are not all over social media and you are making impact and making headlines you are not doing well i'm not saying there's anything wrong with those things but there were people who were sincere their passion was unadulterated they were not looking for a name they were looking to see this mandate come to pass and the pain now is that there are many younger ministers learning some of these things when they began to walk with God it was never about crowd from their lowly estate some of them on campuses some of them they were choir directors when they started having their encounters now they've left all the old notebooks that they used to write things with the Holy Ghost they don't even know where it is now in search for a celebrity lifestyle Isn't it amazing that we hold massive crusades that are full of unbelievers. We talk, we sing, we dance for hours. Then we make an altar call and only two people come out. That is a report card to tell you the kind of laborers we are. And you know, not by word of knowledge, that that place is truly full of unbelievers who need Jesus. What kind of gospel are we preaching? That a sinner is there for hours we claim we are charging the atmosphere and at the end of it that man is not convicted go to Acts chapter 2 and read what happened to the people when broken vessels preach the gospel let it be known to you O Israel said Peter that this same Jesus you have crucified has now been exalted as Lord and Christ the Bible says they were caught to the heart the same thing that happened to the two men that were going to Emmaus that every time there was a communication of the gospel men were caught to the heart not condemned but that there was such an imprint of the spirit and they said men and brethren what do we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and to your children to as many as are far off even those that the Lord your God will call can I tell you men of God we have a serious repentance to do in this conference the first repentance is not sinners. The first repentance, beginning from the person talking to you, this is not tell them that we cry before the Lord and say, Lord, help us. Your father died an unbeliever. You never preached to him, but you collected money from him. And you, you gave him, you were quick to market the invitation of your building project because that one affects your ego directly. Isn't it? We are proud to give posters. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not shaking you to condemn you isn't it amazing that we are bolder over other things but not salvation if at the end of this meeting nobody shouts nobody falls under the anointing nobody does anything maybe I come and preach very simple no Greek no Hebrew no nothing and I make an altar call you will most likely live disappointed if they ask you how is that meeting you say I, I expected more what you meant was that it does not matter who is saved or not let there be power let me see miracles let me see blind eyes open and if salvation does not happen you are a great man of God we must reorient ourselves again because this please come and help me on this this lack of proper orientation is raising a young generation that is ignoring God the content of people's fasting and prayer is never about souls and the program of God. It's Lord, take away shame from my life. Give me power too. Let people know that I have power. And there is nothing wrong with that. I remind you, those you call God's generals were first God's missionaries. They were God's evangelists. They were God's emissaries. Hallelujah. I can now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. As it rises on us. See, when I, when I was brought from the airport and while I was in the car, I was looking at all the people the organization and everything I was so touched in my heart and as my car was moving I was watching the protocol all moving in order and I nodded my head I said this is what destroys our generation celebrity Joshua Selman he has arrived 
and there are many young people that is all they are emulating somebody can watch that scenario and go and do a seven days dry and say because of that oh god what happened to this man must happen to me i want what is it about I... listen ladies and gentlemen we have repentance to do this night oh, don't be offended but if it is genuine revival you want to see in enugu state we must cast our golden crown i'm not saying you are not doing well but we must cast it and say lord there is something wrong with our spiritual orientation can i tell you our fathers did not have a lot of revelation but they had passion for souls that's the reason why when you read about men like Apostle Babalola and some of your fathers who have gone to be with the Lord, they don't know the things we know now in truth. But my goodness, they saw signs and wonders because their, their intention was not fame. Their intention was not miracles. Their intention was not celebrity. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified. For you to be lifted, all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. Every time I pray, I pray for myself. I say, Lord, deliver me from the foolishness of pride, the deceit of fame, and the distraction that comes with popularity mundane distractions people clap and i'm saying there's, there's there's a place for honor but i'm telling you if you know god and you have met god nothing else will satisfy you nothing <laughs> if it is the god of the bible you met i don't care what you have before that time there is a hunger that only the size of god can feel in a man ministers of the gospel when you understand God, you will see that there's no reason for competition. Competition is proof that there was a problem before that time. The problem is the, there, there is an orientation that naturally leads to competition. Are we together? There are souls in Enugu at the mercy of serious laborers. As God grants me the grace to travel from nation to nation, I thank God for all the bits that God is doing in my life. But I'm telling you, for me, oh, this man you see died since. I graduated from doing ministry since. And I started serving the king with my heart. Sincerely, I'm telling you. I'm not just here to come and bamboozle. And, no, 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 no. That I see somebody that Jesus died for. That you can translate that person. I've had the honor of being at the deathbed of a few people. I've seen them moments before they would die. And the moment I go to pray for people, maybe cancer, whatever, and you see them happy, ah, apostle has come, meaning miracle has come. My first spot of call is to get this man saved first. That way I have the confidence, it does not matter what happened. If the person closes his eyes, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not know anybody who has gone out of the earth with his money. I do not know anybody who has gone out of the earth with his business card. I do not know anybody who has gone out of the earth with his certificate. I do not know anybody who carried his building project that you are arguing about out of the earth. If the trumpet sounds today, my suit does not matter. My English does not matter. The, the invitations and the social medias does not matter. The only thing that matters. The hymn writer used to say, must I go and empty handed? He says, must I meet my savior soul? This generation does not even know that hymn again. He says, not one soul with which to greet him. He says, must I empty handed go? Some of you, it was under those atmospheres you were raised. Before some of us came as men of God and started deceiving you. And took away your passion away. Let there be a restoration of that genuine fire. It was those days we used to sing songs like I pledge allegiance to the Lamb With all my heart, with all I am I will seek to honor His command I pledge allegiance to the land.
Bethlehem. There were people who would never sleep until one soul were saved. A father in the Lord, that the Jew Baba Deboy, when he clocked 80, he made a request. And he said, for the remaining part of his life, knowing that the time is not too long again, that the only thing he wants, not cars, not houses, the only thing he wants is to give God 8 million more souls. After that, he'll be ready to go home. And it is that vision that brought up the light of crusades that you see. Eight million souls. I remember Reinhard Bonke in his final days when he came and had his final crusade in Lagos. He went back and all he was concerned about was souls. The man you call Billy Graham who became like a spiritual advisor to kings. He did not start by looking for fame. He sought for Jesus and he sought to see him revealed in many lives. And God translated him to a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. Enugu, hear me. Nobody will win these souls that we see and leave except us. But we should not get God to a point where because of our carelessness, you will start seeing unbelievers that in one month God will train because of the vacancy we have given let God not have to start going to bring madmen in Gadara to win 12 cities because the saints are not ready let God not have to start using prostitutes at the well to go and say come see a man because many people there are unbelievers you will see who God will be training them while he's using them because the the king's business requires haste listen my first assignment tonight is to bring the burden of the spirit to you to tell you that according to god's ranking of honor you are very small except that the size of your souls increase your ranking jesus himself was so he took the issue of soul so serious he had to account for all the souls that were given to him and for the one who was lost he accounted John 17 please sit down he had to account for those souls what did Paul know that even in prison Ladies and gentlemen, if you are bound in prison and you come out of that prison, I don't know about you, but if I come out of prison, I will run out of that city and run home, not Paul. As soon as from the prison, the jailer wanted to kill himself. He said, no, we are potential harvest, you and your house. We are here, we are safe. All I'm concerned about, he said, what do I do? He said, now you're talking, take me to your house. He saw the lady with divination. He was not thinking a potential church member. Uh -uh. This lady is used by the devil. And there has to be deliverance for her. And he got her saved. They got flogged. That's how they got into the prison. Everybody they saw. If you made a mistake of giving Paul. Even if it was 10 minutes to preach you were in trouble. When he stood before Felix. He stood before Agrippa. He said thank you for the opportunity. It's not dying that is my scare. Just allow me say something. And the king said, you almost convinced me. Hallelujah. Every time I go to sleep, I hear the cry of many who need Jesus. I literally hear the cry. It's the spirit of God waking me to say, thank you, son, for what you are doing, but there is more. And that more cannot be done by one man. I can tell you the days of celebrity is drying. It's going down by the spirit of God. Because you see, if all we keep doing is marketing this celebrity Christianity, it is a risk for the people themselves. We will destroy their focus, destroy their consecration, put the people they are mentoring under pressure. Because it will now look like anybody who wants to become like Joshua Selman is not thinking of having your passion, is thinking of having your influence. And while that is important, that is only relevant when your heart condition is right. Let me, until we go to the, tonight I'm dealing with the global harvest. When we now get to the kind of vessel that God is building, there is a kind of believer you must become to do business with God. But ladies and gentlemen, hear me. Imagine that everyone in this place won one soul genuinely.
to Jesus Christ we will have this number of souls in one day do you think this number of salvation in one day will bring joy to the heart of the Father This is what should be behind the singing ministry. This is what should be behind our evangelisms. This should be the primary burden in the heart of an intercessor. That when you are interceding, you are not just saying, Oh God, I'm tired of this curse in my life. No, you are saying, let the cloud that is sitting over lives and destinies and territories, let it be rolled away so that there is free passage and entrance to hear the gospel take it hard for me let me sing a song for you whatever you want to do Lord you can do through me whoever you want to change Lord you can change through me whoever you want to save Lord, you can save through me. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Wherever you want to go Lord you can go through me listen I was born an evangelical and I remember those days when people would come to preach they would ask how many people want to be missionaries to go to the harvest and you would see people come out as though they were coming out for a funeral you would see responsible people I'm not just talking of some weak people who don't know what to do with their lives they would come out and you would see them cry some would hold the hands of their wives and come together and when they came that was not just an altar call for salvation it was a commitment and a vow that for the rest of my life i have signed in to see that souls go to jesus now you make that kind of call as a man of god and you'll be left disappointed you would doubt if god really spoke to you because people are not interested in jesus they are interested in using him I hope you know that those around Jesus did many things with Jesus others wanted to make money out of him others wanted fame they wanted their mother to negotiate positions for them but there were those who loved him sincerely out of the many people he blessed do you notice that when Jesus resurrected everybody was around him but when he was at the cross only John so not many people want to stand before the cross the cross is a difficult place it strips you of your ego it strips you of everything that represents your sense of self-worth however the power of the throne is seen on the cross i have made a vow with my life that in life and death i will not do everything i cannot do everything but as far as it depends on me somebody must know jesus somebody must serve jesus somebody must learn his way and if in the process it pleases him to take me home let it be that for me to live is christ and to die is gain let me tell you the truth if many people had this orientation they would not be in a rush to go into ministry when jesus called people when they saw the enormity of the assignment many of them ran away go and read church history there were people men and women that jesus called for years because they knew the kind of passion that the work of the ministry would demand they ran away look at jonah Jonah was a prophet and when God called him he ran away Jonah was not a fake prophet he knew that destiny was upon him and that God was gracious and compassionate can I tell you the truth I have made up my mind that I will not just receive things from God I will not just be a great man of God there is a place for influence and all these things will teach them tomorrow but right now I have brought the burden of the spirit to Enugu please hear me great people of God you can start from your Jerusalem there are people who are married their husbands are going to hell living in the same house their wives are going to hell living in the same house their children are going to hell you bought a car for your child 
but no Jesus. You gave him good education, but no Jesus. God forbid, but one accident and that child is gone. There are people you know today who left your life in January. You almost don't want to think about it, but the truth is that they are in hell right now. Because the Bible tells us that and he says for God so loved the world that he gave his then only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish that means whoever does not believe in him will perish I do not want to live in the memory that many people were allocated to my life to know Jesus and because of carelessness pride or seriousness or inefficiency I allow them to die without Jesus and don't allow the devil make you believe that what I'm saying does not matter no one day it will come to the corridors of your destiny did the rich man not have an opportunity when he saw Lazarus Lazarus did not have money but he had conviction the rich man ignored him and they all died sin two the rich man found himself in hell burning with pain and Lazarus was at the bosom of Abraham watch the request of the rich man please dip your finger in water and I would appreciate even a drop of water to quench my thirst and he said no that possibility does not exist here again you wasted your time through distraction and he said all right I know that I am doomed but please one request can you send Lazarus back to my people if they see him raise up from the dead they will believe him let him come and beg them and say stop what you are doing there are nobler pursuits in life make sure that before you start looking for money your salvation is intact make sure that before you are building the churches your salvation is intact make sure before you are sending the pastors to build branches that they are safe indeed and he said no they have the law and they have the prophets they should listen to them ladies and gentlemen please hear me I've not come to condemn I've come to stretch you in the spirit to tell you the days of nominal Christianity has come to an end that Jesus Christ is looking for people who will make the global harvest happen I prayed and I told him I said Lord you can count on me by your grace and by your spirit you can count on me to go to the nations you can count on me to take your life and your power to the nations you can count on me sometimes I look at my schedules and the things that I do I get so busy and tired I jumped into the aircraft and I was literally sleeping until the plane landed and sometimes you are tempted to say why do you stretch yourself like this one time I sent um, Baba Deboye's son I said please tell daddy he should be resting oh. and he laughed and replied me he said daddy will not rest he said he will rest in heaven there's no time to rest now he already knows that his days are not so long no matter how long so he's stretching and pushing the last push have you noticed that the fathers the older they get every other thing does not make sense again only souls after exploring life from pillar to post at the end of your life you will find out that all that really matters the price of one soul is equal everything in the world it says what shall it profit a man if he gains and loses walk with me let me just show you the gospel of salvation and then we'll pray hallelujah I want you to bring five people for me I just saw like light coming on five people two of them are ladies and that lady there is a grace God is raising you to be a mighty savior in your family a mighty savior mighty savior there is a grace my love my power more of you in my life it's my prayer Lord my love in my life more love more power more of you in my life 
Hallelujah. From these guys wearing white, I just saw light on one person. There's a mighty impartation. There is someone you are receiving is a mighty is a mandate that God is placing upon your head. Bring them out. Oh, oh, oh. that you bring them there is a revival that will break out in this city after this conference I want you to believe me a mighty revival a revival without walls there are ancient mantles that are returning back some of you have left those cases and left those mantles it's time for it to it's time for it to come back mantles of evangelism that have been deserted by individuals, by denominations, you are picking it again. The Lord of the harvest is visiting Enugu again. The Lord of the harvest is visiting Enugu again. The Lord of the harvest is visiting Enugu again. to discern first corinthians 15 give us verse one to four please sit down if you can when the lord of the harvest comes you will know he has come you will know he has come there is a gentleman called shinedu your name is shinedu there is a fire of revival that is coming upon shinedu and the lord is saying you are my battle axe you are my battle axe. I don't know where that person is. Your name is Shinedu. You are a pastor. I need to do what I'm doing first because I'm seeing like a cloud, but this cloud is fire that is falling. And women, I don't know what it is with women in any group. There is a spirit of revival. Please hear me. I'm speaking apostolically. Women, this is your season. There is a season. Women, a, a grace and a spirit is coming upon women. This is what I'm hearing in my spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that God will find worthy vessels in you. One of you, I, I just saw fire resting on you. Just one of you. Let that grace come upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let that grace come upon you now. Let that grace come upon you now. Let that grace come upon you now. Oh, my God. 
please sit down if you can i have to show you this picture please do we have ushers so that you don't just expose especially the ladies if they are not if there's nothing you can just keep them behind there is a reason why i ask that these people come hallelujah who is ugo chuku i'm hearing the name ugo chuku ugo chuku ugo chuku you're a light-skinned gentleman what's your name ugo chuku where are you from Imo state you are not from this state. no from Imo state but i, I want here. to pray for you what's your name huh come this is the man i saw hallelujah i will pray for you where are you from state. you are in enugu here yes sir in the name of jesus i want to pray for you there is a yoke of darkness it will take time to minister to people tomorrow but i have to obey what god is what do you do i just i just graduated i've been i've been waiting to know my friend you. there is a mighty call of god upon your life that grace let it come upon you now you step into that call never to be weak in your spirit never to be weak in your spirit may my god begin to lead you through experiences that will prune build furnish you until you become a mighty vessel hallelujah in the name of jesus for all of you who came out let that grace rest upon you may you begin a walk with the spirit uninterrupted walk with the spirit that will transform and translate you into a mighty battle axe even by the spirit of the living god i declare this upon your life in the name of jesus amen let's go to our scripture i want to show you something please first corinthians 15 please sit please sit because of the security situation in the land we want to finish very fast so i'm just introducing tonight now please look up this is paul articulating the gospel in a very clear term if you have never known what the gospel is this right here is the gospel moreover my goodness okay brethren he says i declare unto you the gospel watch this now i declare unto you the gospel which i preached unto you he says which also ye have received i wish we could project it i want the people to see it is that possible hallelujah they call you becky becky that should be rebecca i think becky that is the name that i hear in my spirit that they call you becky in the name of jesus christ i hear the lord saying it is coming to an end it is coming to an end this is a circle of tragedy it is coming to an end i'm seeing someone you buried your brother you buried your father and the lord is telling me to rebuke the spirit of death helper in the name of jesus this is a spirit of death hanging around your family did the bible not say it is the power of god unto salvation i decree and declare in the name of jesus the one who died and rose again let that plague of death come to an end over your family hallelujah one gentleman one lady two of them will shout under the anointing please let me speak to them don't mind me let me just do my thing as the spirit of the living god one gentleman one lady one gentleman one lady this is by the influence of the spirit is a mighty grace that is coming upon that gentleman and that lady there is a man of god you are watching me everything you are seeing in this meeting the lord is going to replicate it in your life and ministry of course i know that there's a place for impartation but there is a particular man of god god is showing me this thing that your ministry will be characterized by a strange demonstration of the power of the spirit you will see the manifestation of his power and grace in a way that will surprise you 
in a way that will surprise you you see let me tell you this there is absolutely no reason to fake anything it's a mockery and an insult to yourself and to God when a man goes to collect uh, power or charm it is foolishness it is even a burden to your own self if you know anything about the devil there is no freedom and liberty with him there is a genuine price by the spirit you can pay to carry grace I will be showing you tomorrow what it really takes to carry the power of the spirit indeed not saying I have power showing I have power by God and for the purpose of the kingdom hallelujah let's finish the scripture first Corinthians 15 verse 1 moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel watch this which I preach unto you which also ye have received and wherein ye stand reading to 4 verse 2 by which also ye are saved so how were they saved by the communication of the gospel he said if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you unless ye have believed in vain what then is the gospel verse 3 for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures for and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus his son man and creation being the object of that sacrifice and the Bible declares based on the authority of scripture that any man who believes believes in what number one that Jesus came as an expression of the love of the father number two that he came and prayed and paid the ultimate price of death shedding his blood and dying are we together now and that he resurrected by the glory of the father Peter rounded up his sermon in Acts chapter 2 by saying let it now be known to you O Israel that this same Jesus whom you have crucified have today been exalted as Lord and Christ pastors we must preach the gospel before we teach the word the word is only for believers who are saved please listen preaching the word rema doctrine communication of truth is only for people who have met Jesus it is a waste teaching anybody who is not saved the teaching ministry was designed as you will be learning tomorrow to mature the saints to translate them to be people of stature and to be witnesses but in order of priority the first assignment of any man of God and any believer as far as being incorporated in God's program is concerned is to see to it that men meet Jesus not by blindly claiming salvation not by assuming they are saved longevity around church does not translate to salvation serving a man of God sincerely does not translate to salvation being a worker in church in fact being a sincere person does not translate to salvation hallelujah and when you come out an altar call is just a means of organizing those who are saved the Bible lets us know according to Romans chapter 10 9 and 10 that the protocol for salvation is that your heart and your lips must participate if your heart and your lips does not participate you are not saved hear what the Bible says if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and thou shalt believe in thine heart you see that most people do the confession part but in truth they don't believe and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead when you study about the Pharisees and the Sadducees it was this one striking difference that was a subject of controversy Pharisees and Sadducees never were friends they only came together as a force to fight Jesus before now they were always at loggerheads and it was the doctrine of the resurrection I hope you know that one of the foundational doctrine there are six foundational doctrines according to Hebrews chapter 6 that build the believer to maturity and stature are we together one of it is the doctrine of the resurrection 
you are not a Christian if you do not believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead because the victory was at the point of resurrection resurrection was proof that he had defeated sin Satan death hell and the grave if he did not raise up from the dead there would not be that statement where is oh death where is your victory oh hell where is your sting Jesus rose again it is true and because he rose again all the saints shall arise remember apostle Paul was teaching the church in Thessalonica and he was comforting them and teaching them as touching the destiny of those who die and he let them know that when people die in the faith we do not say they are dead we say they have slept because when men sleep they wake up so the concept of the resurrection is what changed the idea for a Christian from death to sleep that those who sleep sleep at night and those who sleep have an assurance that they will wake up the psalmist said I lay me down and I slept some three and I awake for the Lord sustain me so that one day watch this now a day is going to come ladies and gentlemen I wish I had the time I would have taught you the seven pillars of the Christian faith there are seven pillars that represent the Christian faith we may differ across many divides we represent different denominations here with the honor to our various beliefs and there might be differences here and there but there are seven pillars that must not shift if you do not believe that you are not a Christian one of it is the incarnation that Jesus was God and is God and came born of the Virgin Mary you must believe in the incarnation you must believe in his earth work that he lived upon the earth he walked although a man he lived a sinless life born of Mary and born of the Spirit you must believe in the fact that he came to represent the purposes of God he came as an advocate there are three major reasons why Jesus came to the earth number one Jesus came to the earth as a correction of our understanding about an unknown God because until Jesus manifested men did not know God there was no widespread manifestation of the Holy Spirit so the dead inhabitants had to depend on what the prophets told them God was and they made a lot of mistakes there were gaps in their knowledge they credited many things that was not God to God because we see in part and we prophesy in part so Jesus came as a manuscript he came as a marking script correcting the prior idea that we had about God so everything the prophets claim that God was we will reference it against the life and the earth work of Jesus and it now gives us a scriptural basis to edit what they told us God is for instance when the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love you have a right to doubt it until you see it proven in the life of Jesus how did he respond to people the Bible will say he was moved with compassion based on Jesus we can say those prophets were right as far as touching that statement is concerned are we together now when you hear things like a lying spirit came from God now we look at Jesus and Jesus said Satan was a liar and the father of all them that lie so we know that based on Jesus we need to correct that thing the prophet said that is how we judge scripture we judge scripture using the lens of Jesus are we together the second reason why Jesus came was as a pattern man a model to the believer that will come out as a result of his resurrection we are products and fruits of the resurrection in truth we are not I know it's Old Testament New Testament but the believer is not really the New Testament as we say we are products of it are we together now it was on account of the resurrection it was the Holy Spirit that birthed our dispensation God for us God with us Emmanuel when Jesus walked upon the earth now God in us the dispensation of the Holy Spirit began from Acts chapter 2 and will end finally when believers are raptured in fact what you call rapture is the temporary exiting of the Holy Spirit together with the believers because we are bound with him we have to go to that is the reason why the the Bible defines light as the world without us are we together now it's very important for you to understand this from the day the Holy Ghost came to the earth he has not left earth he cannot leave it's inseparable 
he shall be with you and shall be in you he's with us the holy spirit has the official status of the lord of the harvest he is the overseer over this global harvest this is the reason why we know that in spite of our frailty the mission will not fail not because of us but because of the builder the lord of the harvest are we learning now so jesus came as a model the bible says looking unto jesus he calls him the author and the finisher of our faith he came to model to the believer what it means to be approved of god what it means to please the father because the father had this to say about jesus that he was his beloved son in whom he was well pleased the third reason why jesus came was as a mediator that's the one that most believers know as a mediator he came through the the penalty of death and the shedding of his blood that he will call many sons into glory reconciling us back to the father why to give us access to receive righteousness the life of god and eventually the holy spirit you find that in galatians chapter 3 i believe from verse 8 it says christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is every man that hanged upon the tree that the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles verse 8 he says um that to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith i'm not sure my media person is working with me verse 8 you go to 8 huh am i right on that find it for me yeah 8 9 10 i think somewhere along that line christ that redeemed us from the curse of the law so to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith nobody has access to the holy spirit until you have righteousness equal to that of jesus and that qualifies you now to have the life of god even the spirit of god this is very important i'm saying this because it is important for us to know and understand that if we must be effective if jesus christ must be revealed in enugu state the first part of call is a restoration of the mandate of soul winning a restoration of the mandate of soul winning a restoration of the mandate of soul winning that every church every mission agency indeed every believer we must know that we are principally saddled with the assignment of seeing to it that souls are saved beginning from our families to schools to everywhere and the bible lets us know that in the mind of god every unsaved person is called a harvest a harvest that is already ripe that if for any reason there is difficulty in gathering the harvest the problem is not from the harvest the problem is the quality of the laborers you must understand the gospel the gospel is not man's idea the gospel does not demand creativity in terms of communicating it it is fixed the truth there are exact that jesus came he died are we together he resurrected by the glory of the father and the bible tells us that while we are giving witness to that truth the holy spirit is ever there to back us that every kind of backing you need to prove that what you are saying is not a lie god is ready to coordinate the resources of heaven god is ready to coordinate the power even if it is the powers of the age to come if it will help to enhance your communication of the gospel that god's hand is not restrained as far as making it available to you is concerned now the preaching of the gospel will demand three kinds of people this is my last communication and then we'll pray number one as far as the global harvest is concerned there are three kinds of people god is looking for number one they are called prophetic intercessors as far as the global harvest is concerned this is the strategy that has been used by god from time immemorial if you want to see a widespread manifestation of salvation number one prophetic intercessors the assignment of these people is to pray the program of god to come please help them my god ushers please be around so that if anybody falls so that we manage them and then we don't have any casualties hallelujah let me have your attention please are we together so the bible says look at me please that i sought for a man i sought for a man i sought for a man there are many many people please look at me 
there are many many people god is looking for many many people that god is counting on seeking for a man a man that he will use as a prophetic intercessor you want to see the darkness over enugu give way may god find men who know how to pray not just prayer for themselves intercession demands that you look away from your personal needs and focus on the program of god are we together now prophetic intercessors i believe that there are people here who god has already raised and there are yet many people male and female educated and uneducated young and old all together i'm praying that somebody by the spirit will make himself a willing vessel from tonight that i will be a prophetic intercessor that you will carry enugu as a project and keep it before your prayer altar and say father maranatha let jesus come let revival come let your program be birthed one of the assignments of prophetic intercession is to birth and to sustain God's program there is no genuine revival that is birthed and sustained without a robust prophetic intercessory ministry he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray Luke 18 and verse 1 and not to faint Enugu you must trust God to have men of prayer men of prayer fervent and effectual prayer that you make it a duty to intercede for all the men of god in this city you make it a duty to intercede for all the programs you hear that a crusade is happening don't say it's not my church if it is jesus it is your business the moment the name of the G of jesus will be mentioned it has become your business immediately and the least you can do is to pray father the vessel who will be used there move in power through that person that the gospel is communicated with precision and with accuracy in Acts chapter 4 that was a prayer of the apostles that you grant by the spirit that miracles be wrought in the name of your holy son to the end that Jesus be revealed and the moment they pray the Bible says the place shook Enugu there must be people who pray gentlemen and ladies be people of prayer not as an emergency response system you must learn to pray hold on to the horns of the altar pray away curses pray away darkness pray away the blindfolding layers that are covering potential prophets potential apostles the spirits that are stunting churches and not allowing for growth and expansion for so many to come and be transformed that becomes your project and you pray it until you see like elijah a manifestation of that which has been finished in the spirit number two the second group of people who will be needed for this global harvest are those who are sent to the field sent to the field you can call them evangelists you can call them preachers everybody who must declare that message how shall they hear except they be a preacher a preacher is not just one who is standing with a mic on a pulpit a preacher is one who is determined to declare jesus to the nations you can preach by singing you can preach by declaring you can take advantage of social media platforms to articulate jesus to as many and if it is one person who is hearing you god is still grateful that you took a step can i tell you the price of one soul is the blood of Jesus and if you are to save everybody that is unsaved it will happen one by one by one by one a little statistics to challenge you there are only 2.8 billion professing Christians on earth out of the over 8 billion people I don't know how many professing Christians are in Enugu I don't know how many professing Christians are in this are in the southeast I'm not sure there is an exact statistics for that but whatever it is I can tell you that it is a wake-up call for all of us 2.6 billion professing Christians out of 8, 8 billion inhabitants upon the earth we still have a long way going and it may interest you to know that from a statistical standpoint the fastest growing religion in the world is not the Christian faith unfortunately The harvest is wide but the laborers are few the laborers are few among the many strategies the believer was given he left us the creativity of inventing superior strategies of communicating Jesus when the gospel was given to the apostles there was no social media isn't it amazing 
that through the power of platforms like YouTube, I am here speaking and yet I can speak to the whole nation. I can speak to the entire globe from one position. This is a profound advantage. This is what the prophet saw by revelation as a flying scroll. He says, what seest thou? He was talking about the power of technology in being able to capture the gospel. He could only call it a flying scroll. The power of media. Media was only known to be a book, but now he's seen a scroll that can go on air. Hallelujah. Prophetic intercessors and then a vast army of people who will see to it that everyone they can find is saved. Are you ready for the last people? The last group that must be involved to make the global harvest come to pass are financiers. Advancing the purposes of God as far as communicating the gospel is concerned is very expensive. You know that by now. You hear me say the name of Jesus is very heavy, that it takes resources to lift it high for the nations to see. I was teaching my people on Sunday and we explored the scripture where men were given money to say that Jesus did not resurrect. Satan is still paying people till today to say Jesus is not risen. Financial resources are very powerful when they are used properly. And there are many of you here. I'm speaking to Easterners. Do you know why God gave you a unique grace? Watch this. Let me give you one prophetic word and we'll pray. Do you know why God invested the creativity and the ability to produce wealth in the East? It is because there is an assignment, corporately speaking, as far as funding the program of God. People will fund the program of God from across the globe, but there is a sound of kingdom financing that should come from the East that God is yet to hear. And there are people that God is raising. It is not about being a businessman. You listen to what I'm telling you. Many do not even know why they are business inclined. They just know that I have a passion for business and I'm doing well. I'm exporting, I'm importing. I can tell you, behind that is not just to gather money and build houses. Mm -mm. Because a time will come when an end time shofar will sound and God will say, where are the people who have placed resources in their hands? Let's make this happen now. And one man will rise like a nation and say, as far as soul winning in the East is concerned, here are my resources. It took Joseph of Arimathea donating his grave, donating his sepulcher for Jesus to be buried. Otherwise, there would not be resurrection. Eastern as hear me, you have a prophetic assignment in this end time. The intelligence God gave you as far as transacting wealth is concerned. It is not just a heritage that God gave a people like that. It is for a purpose. And very soon, the one who gave you that grace is going to come and say, what did you do with the five talent I gave you? What did you do with the two talent I gave you? I blessed this family with an uncommon ability to do business. Every one of the six people have become a millionaire. Now I have come. Where is the five talent? Have you turned it to ten? Because there is need for some of those talents to go to the crusade ground. There is need for structures and systems to be built as far as souls are concerned. So if you find yourself doing business with this understanding, you will now know that it's more than making money. It is a mandate you are fulfilling. This is the one problem I have with the prosperity message. If it is not pro-kingdom, and a vision is not given it now becomes a marketing of flesh carnality that leads people towards destruction what brings perspective to the message of wealth and abundance is when it is connected to this purpose of kingdom come ask every man of god here seated and they will tell you there are ministries here the running cost of church just on sunday or one week a week probably would start the building projects of many people and yet this is what happens only God can tell the amount of financial investment that went in for this program please do not downplay the importance of financial resources when it enters the heart of air the hand of someone whose heart is stayed on seeing that souls are saved hallelujah God is counting on you God is counting on me and I don't know about you, but I've vowed by the Spirit of God that I will not fail. That by the Spirit of the living God, as far as it depends on me, 
the hymn writer says i'll be a true soldier he says i'll die at my post he will come and find me there diligently serving diligently serving i'll be here loving you all of the days of my life i'll be here serving you all of the days of my life now be here worshiping all of the days of my life i'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life we're going to pray and i want you to participate in this prayer there are two things that will happen to you and then we'll wrap up tonight the first thing that you are going to pray for is you are going to cry for an impartation of the grace to be an active part of this global harvest it is called global because everywhere in the world is a potential field but you can start from the east hear me my precious people nobody will come and spearhead the gospel and salvation in your territory above and beyond those who are inhabitants of the territory God must find a people God must find a great people who will pray who will speak and who will give as far as that soul winning as far as that revival in as much as it is true that revival is centered on believers when you study revival revival is really for believers because a man who is not saved does not need revival revival is for people who have lost their fire and fervency but then it spills over and it affects unbelievers too there's gonna be a great awakening over the east there's gonna be a great revival in your land there's gonna be a great awakening and everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Now look at me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call on a group of people right now. There's a crowd of people here watching me, listening to me. Thousands of others by way of internet, television, and the media space. You are in this place and you are saying, Apostle, while I heard you speak, the truth is that I have not made this commitment for Jesus. I cannot say I am saved genuinely. I can say I have gone to church and I am in church. I can even say I am a worker in church. Perhaps I am even a man of God. But I have never sincerely made this decision. Number two, there are those who are saying I need to rededicate my life sincerely. I came out for an altar call. But the truth is I did not even understand what I was doing. I only felt emotional after a well presented sermon and I responded thus. But now on hearing you speak, I know that I need to start afresh. I'm going to count one to five and I don't want you to sit dilly darling. This is a matter of your destiny that wherever you are across the balcony and here seated, I count one to five and you are saying, Apostle, please give me a chance to make it right with Jesus. I want you to give me the honor of leading you to Jesus genuinely. Leave your seat and run, come and stand here. I begin my counting now. One. Two. Genuine salvation. You may cry, but come. Come. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Oh, our Father, hear us from heaven, forgive us sin. We pray one more time. Our Father, you are in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Our Father, hear us from heaven. Forgive our 
Enugu, are you celebrating a mighty harvest for Jesus? Can I tell you, listen to me. Even if it were only one soul, one, even if it were only one gentleman or one young lady that came and stood here, it would still be worth the clap. Because the price of every one of these people is the blood of Jesus. Now, please, I want you to listen to me, my precious brothers and sisters. First, I want to salute you. Some of you may be the first to make this decision in your family. Some of you may be the first to make this consciously. Some of you, while you are standing here, the devil is condemning you and telling you everything you have done and not done and become and not become. No. There were two thieves that were hanging with Jesus on the cross. One acknowledged he was a thief. And Jesus looked at him and said, this day you will be with me in paradise. The other one, even though he was on, a cro on the cross, he did not accept and admit and open up his heart to receive. Hear me. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, I see some of you crying. Do not be ashamed of your tears. This is why Jesus put this program together. Young and old, male and female, I'm going to lead you to pray this prayer. For some of you, you've said it before, but not with understanding. For some of you, you are saying it now with understanding. I want you to lift your right hand high. Let Jesus see you lift it high as a sign of surrender. And please shout this from the depth of your heart. Jesus is here. Take your, your eyes beyond Joshua Selman and see the one who loved you and died for you standing here. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I declare that I love you with all my heart. I declare that I believe in you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of satan sin hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i receive eternal life I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. This is a mighty harvest coming from the southeast. Lord, I am praying in the name of Jesus based on the authority of scripture that their sins be forgiven this moment. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare that every power that has kept you in sin every power that has kept you bound you are released from it now in the matchless name of jesus based on the authority of scripture i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god that from tonight you go forward ever and backward never in jesus mighty name we pray now um, there's a crowd of people here I do not know if you will be attended to this night the usual the usual custom would be to lead you to a place where counselors will be able to talk with you I'm not sure that might be able to happen tonight huh? is there provision for that for this number of people if there is no provision for that what I can do is to ask you to return to your seat but then tomorrow I would request that um, the counselors come perhaps with a card 
and then I will request that for all of you who have made this decision, please when I make that call, do indicate by wave of hand tomorrow um, because I know that this will be an enormous responsibility and it will create a lot of commotion trying to bring the people out. We want to make sure that um, nobody is hurt um, so that we can manage because people might be going out whilst we're praying and we don't want anyone hurt. So here's what I will, I will say. I'm going to bless you and I will allow you to go back to your seat. Tomorrow when the cards come, please do well to indicate. We would like you to feel that you have given your heart to Jesus and um, you will be followed up on and will create a system that helps you to be established in righteousness in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and congratulations. Please return to your seat rejoicing. Let me request that we all rise. Let's just have five minutes of prayer and we're done please everyone participate in the prayer we're about to pray just five minutes of prayer in the name of jesus can i lead you to pray do you love to pray here everyone say in the name of jesus shout it louder say in the name of jesus say father i decree and i declare i decree and i declare that the gospel will be preached through my life souls will be saved through my life i obtain that grace go ahead and begin to pray go ahead and begin to pray i obtain that grace i obtain that grace to see the global harvest come to pass in and through my life i obtain that grace you can count on me you can count on my church. You can count on my witness. You can count on my efficiency. Go ahead and pray. Jesus one more time let's wave our beautiful hands to heaven and tell him thank you thank you for life for grace wisdom preservation thank you Jesus 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 for in Jesus matchless name we have worshiped hallelujah while the wonderful woman of God was ministering and then pastor Nat came up you know I just stood quietly there and in all honestly I was thinking about my own life I was even lost in the worship it is true that God can help men it is true that God can lift men it is true that behind every extraordinary result, whether men acknowledge it through their pride or otherwise, God is the lifter of men. And in the name of Jesus Christ, he's lifting someone this morning. I say it again that in the name of Jesus, my God is lifting someone this morning. Amen and amen. Now... I just sense in my spirit that this is a very prophetic atmosphere and so I'm going to spend a few minutes that I have just speaking over our lives I'll just recap on a few things show us one key 
and then just speak over our lives let me encourage that our hearts be very sensitive the waters have been stirred and i believe that no one here present will return disappointed in the name of jesus so lord we look unto you again if you do not help us we remain helpless help us speak to us lift us by your word and by your spirit impart upon us the grace for the days ahead and to jesus be all the glory amen and amen please be seated thank you again pastor ben sir thank you sincerely and honor and salutations one more time to my dear friend and brother pastor nathaniel it was an awesome time this morning at the hallelujah challenge let's give jesus a big big hand clap amen now yesterday um i began a discussion here that um we began to talk about seasons according to ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 the bible says to everything there is a season and then it says a time to every purpose under the heavens hallelujah i did tell us that god's dealings with men as far as the earth is concerned is fragmented into seasons hallelujah and we said that there are predictable seasons and sadly there are unpredictable seasons there are moments where an individual is given the liberty to even program your seasons for instance through the power of the spoken word through the power of the prophetic by engaging principles but there are times that seasons befall us sometimes unprepared for instance the sudden loss of a loved one for instance something tragic like it happened to the man job as we studied now the bible tells us and this was revealed through we took the dream of pharaoh the dream of pharaoh is a prophetic message about the reality of seasons hallelujah that seed time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter day and night will not cease now you are not given the liberty to necessarily select seasons but that the the believer can remain victorious in spite of whatever seasons are we together and the bible now tells us that the pharaoh went to bed and had a dream very strange and mysterious dream and in that dream he saw four well-fed fatted calves and then the lean ones would come to eat them seven of them seven cows and then seven lean ones would come to eat them then he saw also seven ears of corn well fed and then he saw seven pale sickly um you know um you know the the whole plants and they came and ate the ones that were well nourished and joseph in interpreting that dream said pharaoh you have seen the same thing this is established and it will not change god was only revealing to you the reality of seasons that in every man's life there will always be seven years of abundance followed by seven years of famine hallelujah you do not have to be a victim of the season but the seasons will come jesus himself said i must walk the works of him that sent me then he says while it is day and jesus says for the night cometh even for him when no man will walk again hallelujah and joseph interpreted the dream and gave us a solution i'm recapping very quickly because joseph's recommendation becomes for us the prophetic compass that we use to navigate seasons of uncertain times he told pharaoh here is the solution when you are in your season of abundance take 20 percent and begin to save for the seasons of famine are we together he was speaking in terms of economics but this is a principle that applies i told you that every negative season comes with a letter from uh, the next season of joy i am coming and every season of celebration comes with a letter 
from seasons that attempt to bring tragedy and pain i am also coming the assignment of the believer therefore is to be able to understand the systems of advantage that has been built in the kingdom so that whether you are in the season of famine or the season of abundance you will always be able to thrive in samaria the bible tells us that there was famine in the land is that true but did you realize that there were two people who were spared they were not victims of that famine number one the king number two the prophet the prophetic the priesthood and the king were exempted and the bible tells us that we happen to be both today that we are both kings and we are priests that means we have the immunity to stand and to thrive not just to survive but to thrive hallelujah four strategies i gave us and i'll just recap on it you want to thrive through these kinds of seasons when you are in your season of abundance use that opportunity to do four things number one we said build capacity in the seasons of abundance you take advantage of the leverage of ease you take advantage of the leverage of favorable opportunities to build capacity the chiefest of them being your spiritual capacity the angel speaks to elijah and says eat for the journey is far he ate a little and then went to bed and he tapped him he said eat again for the journey is far and the bible says he went in the strength of what he ate hallelujah it says if you turn aside in the day of battle there is such a day called the day of battle it says it is because your strength is small so number one you build capacity number two you build strategic relationships remember when you are in your season of abundance moments of ease moments of opportunity you leverage on that advantage to build strategic opportunities jesus himself was speaking and he said once upon a time there was a man who had visitors who came to his house late in the night and did not have a meal to serve them and he went to the house of his friend and knocked on that door and said friend please come out and help me and give me this and that i have visitors who suddenly came i didn't prepare for them but now they are here and i cannot leave them without you know refreshing them and the bible says the the friend said i am tired it's late i cannot come out but because of the advantage of friendship he came out and he insisted and gave him as many as he desired who hates you does not matter but in this kingdom who likes you matters hallelujah there are people today who have recycled seasons of pain in their lives because they did not take advantage of favorable seasons to build relationships relationship is an investment it will sting your ego it will cost you everything your resources it will cost you whatever it is but it is worth the price hallelujah there are children today who will never beg because their parents took out time to establish strategic relationships and whether dead or alive they have provided a platform for those ahead of them to be blessed may you be such a one in jesus name Amen. number three what do you do when you are in your season of abundance i said yesterday selflessly invest in being a blessing and in transforming as many we maximize seasons of blessings when we use the opportunities that come with those seasons to bless and to transform as many now you're not called to do everything you're not called to help everyone but let someone smile because you are alive let someone find hope because god brought you into a season of blessing and a season of abundance hallelujah genesis chapter 12 and verse 3 in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed in thee shall all the family of the earth be blessed it matters that you pay the price to selflessly invest in blessing and transforming people hallelujah the world does not celebrate people who are takers waiting for opportunities to amass for themselves the one problem with the rich fool i always wondered why such a combination would be accrued to a man because wealth and foolishness should not go hand in hand yet there is a man in the bible called the rich fool it takes a lot of wisdom to build riches but a man happened to combine both 
a rich fool and the foolishness was not because of the resources it was because he did not understand the purpose of the resources hallelujah and the bands that he built was an example of what was in his heart and he built it and put his god there and said my soul find rest upon the fact that i have these resources and the lord said no you are foolish even though you are rich so the purpose of every opportunity god gives us is not just to be self-centered but to become an extension of his love an extension of his grace to be instruments of mercy hallelujah the hymn writer would say only remembered by what we have done i would always say that people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care and this is true are we learning and then number four we said we take advantage of seasons of plenty our seven years by studying and carefully following those who have been consistent through seasons one of the ways that you maximize your seasons of plenty is to study the lives of men and women who by grace have mastered the art of surviving seasons I told us yesterday do not trivialize consistency when you see it consistency is proof of mastery consistency means there is something you know there is something you have obtained that makes you remain in spite of changing seasons our world is full of people who once were great once were anointed once were influential once were wealthy and sadly they could not survive certain seasons and so when you see men and women who have extended their consistency through the seasons in business in ministry in family you have a healthy respect for them and then you follow those them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise hallelujah but now what do you do when sudden unfavorable seasons appear because they will i wish i could tell you they would not come they will sudden unfavorable seasons and for a case study yesterday we took the story of the man job that a man who the bible says feared the lord and eschewed evil and one day tragedy struck in the life of job back to back the death of his children the depletion of his estate the loss of his cattle everything just went haywire in the life of job i gave us three recommendations number one you must protect your joy at every cost the bible says in habakkuk 3 17 to 19 that though the fig tree would not blossom remember habakkuk 3 he says neither shall fruit be on the vine the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls he say yet somebody say yet yes. yet means in spite of i will rejoice not in the situation i will rejoice in the lord and i will joy in the god of my salvation can i tell you you must protect your joy it is better to lose money and have your joy with you it is better to lose a job as painful as it is you have not truly lost if your joy is still with you but it doesn't matter what you have around your life if you had to trade your joy for it it was an unwise bargain are we together when seasons on favorable seasons the seven years of famine when they strike even if you do not know what to do start by protecting your joy by all means it says rejoice in the lord always and again i say again i repeat again i emphasize rejoice you have been taught that happiness is circumstantial it's a product of delight that is derived from the presence of results but when you do not have anything that is worthy of celebration joy is of the spirit only the holy ghost can truly bring joy and you can protect your joy you should protect your joy number two i said that we deal with unfavorable seasons when we learn to turn our pain to worship and thanksgiving that everything that is a source of pain can be used as the reason to worship mm job 1 20. please show it to us job chapter 1 and verse 20. the book of job chapter 1 and verse 20. 
watch this this was after the whole news the back-to-back -back tragedy was announced to job can you imagine a, a, a people lined up before job and imagine how broken the heart of this man would be if the news came and allowed some time for him to be able to you know to be able to come to that realization and to to just come to terms with it but back to back and here was his response the bible says at the end of the last tragic announcement then job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worshiped how do you worship in the midst of this news of death loss depletion i do not know any man on earth in modern history who in within short a period of time went through this kind of tragedy losing your everything literally the only thing he had left was his god his wife and his life every other thing he had built including his children representing the potential for a great future everything left and the bible says he worshiped ah amazing i will sing i will praise even in my darkest hour through the sorrow and the pain i will sing and i will praise i lift my hands to honor you because your word is true i lift my hands to honor you because your word is true i lift my voice to worship you because your word is true i will sing so when you experience tragedy while men keep motivating you to curse god you are a righteous man you come to church all the time how come you lost your child you lost your job regardless the prophecy the business still failed regardless the laying on of hands it looks like the cancer is growing and now it's stage four does that mean you have just a few months to leave the bible says job bowed himself and worship this is the truest demonstration of faith that you remain consistent in your worship even when it does not make sense hallelujah to the point that the wife of job now i understand strangers but the wife of job said why do you still hold on to your integrity he said curse god and die at least we will know you have tried you have survived too much pain to still call god faithful you have survived too much pain it does not make sense keeping your integrity uh -uh. your life does not show any profiting in serving god again now that you have all kinds of boils why do you hold your integrity she said curse god and die but job said though he slay me yet will i trust him here's what he said all the days of my appointed time i will wait this is already a prophetic word for someone there are many believers who love the lord and roll on the ground in the presence of opportunity when you are in your seven years promotions coming children coming wonderful things happening but let me tell you there are times i preached a message years ago called when god is silent that the silence of god is a language when god is silent you must know he's saying something every time god does not reply you in the midst of pain god where are you when he is silent discern the voice of silence there is something the silence of god is saying hmm. isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 says fear not i have redeemed you he says i have called you by name you are mine when you walk through the waters i will be with you through the rivers it shall not overwhelm you then it says when you walk through the fire it will not consume you say amen. amen number three what do you do when unfavorable seasons come upon you call upon the Lord in prayer call upon the Lord in prayer James chapter 5 and verse 13 is any man afflicted he says let him pray is any man afflicted 
that includes a businessman that includes a parent that includes someone in the hospital diagnosed with a condition that the doctors may not even really truly understand he says if any man among you afflicted king's court let him pray let him pray let him pray when seasons changed over jesus he was in gethsemane even as the son of god the word incarnate the bible says he prayed repeating the same words again let him pray and then verse 16 b tells us that the fervent and effectual prayer not of everyone the righteous the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous avail it much there is power that is generated when you pray because you will be learning that there are times where your season has come to an end like it happened to the nation of israel but satan leverages on it to continue negative seasons the prophecy over israel was that they will be in captivity for 400 years and it became 430 my assignment this morning is to scan by the lens of the spirit who has satan elongated negative seasons over that a season has come to an end and yet you are still suffering things that are not part of god's prophetic blueprint that's why the bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to give them beauty for ashes are we together now yes The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, he says, that they may be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness, the planting of our God. I like the tree. You know, the Bible says he shall be like a tree. And the tree is very powerful. We do raining at dry seasons in Nigeria. When it is dry season, the tree does not run away. The tree has a strategy for survival until rain comes. One of it is to shed its leaves. And you will see a tree that was once blossoming, looking green and lush, looking pale and sickly. It's not called weakness, it's called endurance. The tree remains. Every other thing is lost except the root. It's still standing. It will, it will lose the potential to bear fruit temporarily. You would see the tree and it does not look like a pleasant sight. You would not even come under it for shade because in many cases there are no leaves. It's, conserv it's conserving its energy while preparing. The same tree that you see looking in a sorry state is building energy. Mm. He shall be like a tree he shall be like a tree hallelujah and then when the rain begins to come and you will be learning that the rain is the holy spirit ah isaiah 32 15 until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful field and a fruitful field be counted for a forest hallelujah and when rain comes within a moment sometimes shorter and faster than you can imagine the leaves come again the pot the potential to bear fruit was always there The potential to bear fruit was always there. It was not lost because of the... ...unfavorable season.
favorable season mm. are we learning you must learn to pray believers you can pray until seasons change you can remain father i will pray i don't have a job yet i don't have a child yet I don't even know where to go from here. Tragedy has struck, but I pray. And if And if you do not know how to pray, you pray in the spirit, taking advantage of the resources, the intelligence of the Holy Spirit. For someone God is speaking to you, you are in a season right now that does not seem to have. If 
definition is just pain speaking to you you are in a season right now that does not seem to have definition is just pain left and right the assignment is to pray In left and right the assignment is to pray guide up your loins and pray and sometimes faster than you can imagine these seasons will come to an end according to the dream of pharaoh if you are seeing seven years of famine i can tell you it will not remain forever the only thing that is eternal is god himself there is no season that is um, eternal and remains forever seasons change as far as the earth remains seed time 
harvest cold heat summer winter ecclesiastes 3 says a time to laugh a time to cry that's why god gave you the ability to do both because you will need it at one point in your life there's nobody who has the ability to laugh alone there's nobody who has the ability to cry alone so when you see me cry know that within me is still the ability to laugh let seasons change and you will see that he's turned my mourning into dancing and my sorrow into joy don't give up your ability to laugh because you are crying and don't give you up your ability to cry because you are laughing you will need both the wisdom of god made both available there are times that even jesus wept mm. hallelujah let me give you number four the prophetic advantage every time you are in a negative season please listen please listen let me have your attention every time you are in a season that you do not understand a season that spells woe and tragedy a season of uncertainty the moment you begin to pray among the many things you should look out for is the coming the introduction of the prophetic into your life and into your situation all through scripture when god's people were in unfavorable situations what happened to them was that god sent a prophet he saw the captivity of israel in egypt and here's what he told moses i have seen and heard the cry of my people as a result of their taskmasters he says and i am come down but we never saw him come physically he sent a deliverer called moses every time people cry in pain and every time a negative season is about to come to end god will always introduce to that space a prophetic voice now there is the prophetic as an office please look up and there is the prophetic as a spiritual operation not everybody is called to the office of the prophet but on account of the advantage of scripture everyone can operate the prophetic are we together now not everyone is called to the office of a prophet but everyone taking advantage of the ministry of the holy spirit and the word of god which is a more sure word of prophecy can express the prophetic there is no man who comes out of negative seasons ignoring the prophetic you search the scripture mm. hallelujah I'm rejoicing already in my spirit because I know that someone you came to church but really what was happening in the spirit was that a door was opening before you and you were walking out of one season and entering into another you believe that shout a loud amen why is the prophetic very powerful number one because the prophetic has a unique ability to exert dominion over time the prophetic has the unique advantage of exerting dominion over time it can exert dominion over time it says to appoint unto them that mourn in zion you know what that means to fix a date for their deliverance to appoint does not mean to discuss whether they want to be delivered the man was at the pool of bethesda for 38 years hallelujah when jesus showed up he did not have to wait for the stirring of the water again the moment jesus showed up and spoke a season opened unto him hallelujah yeah it is true that seasons must run their course in your life but i can tell you the moment the prophetic comes it has a unique advantage of exerting dominion over time we do not know how long samaria
Samaria was to wait without bread, without supply. But the moment Elisha came, Here's what he said by this time tomorrow. How do you make such an audacious statement? I understand making such a statement over an individual, but a whole nation by this time tomorrow. Can I speak that to someone in the name of Jesus, the one who helps men? I prophesy to you that by this time tomorrow, may my God turn your mourning to dancing, may my God turn your sorrow to joy in the name of jesus christ please be seated it is the process and the season that takes time the deliverance is usually instant ask joseph he was in the prison not knowing he was hours away to leave the prison and exact dominion over it my bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon hmm. the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon the prophetic is very powerful sadly i know that he's been abused on many fronts but i can tell you sincerely when god wants to lift you and bring you to your prophetic season or out of a season of tragedy you must encounter the prophetic jesus as the son of god had to encounter three prophets for his destiny to be opened number one simeon the prophet number two anna the prophetess number three john the baptist coming in the spirit of elijah that the son of the living god as the word incarnate you would think because he came from heaven, he would glide through seasons like that. Mm -mm. Ah, I rejoice already. I'm telling you, I, I know when this water is stirred in my spirit. Someone will be rejoicing after this service. Do you believe what you are hearing? Abraham, even though there was destiny and prophecy upon his head, his heavens were closed until he met a strange entity called Melchizedek. He received tithe of Abraham and hear the kind of strange blessing he gave him. He said, blessed be Abraham, son of the most high, possessor of the heavens and the earth. Ah. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. God. That's someone's song. Hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 say. Hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ay, 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 
Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Listen, I'm on. I'm already giving you your song as you make your triumphant entry. Hey, Balako, see him that you leave church and you begin to dance and celebrate why listen when saul met with samuel the bible says as soon as he met with samuel number one the donkey that was missing began to find his way home so restoration is possible not under every condition i hope you know the first thing god restores is time because the greatest loss a man can have is the loss of time and i will restore the years he says mm. hallelujah the prophetic is powerful i tell you happy is the man that genuinely encounters a prophetic grace please sit down let me show you one thing about the prophetic and then we'll pray don't tempt me i resist that temptation but not help me all these my people who have to help me now amen and amen and amen ah this thing is on me now praise the name of the lord yes, sir. when elisha said by this time tomorrow he was not giving them a privileged information. He was creating what would happen. Are, are we together now? There are two dimensions to the prophetic. Believers, please understand. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. So God by his servant reveals things. Some you know, some you do not know. The purpose is to encourage your faith that God is aware of you and your condition and your situation. And then to give you guidance. But the more superior dimension of the prophetic. Is the creative dimension of the prophetic. This is not God. giving you a privileged information he's programming a possibility that had no business happening mm. so when he says by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened anyway let me tell you how listen i'm on i'm already giving you your song as you make your triumphant entry hey balako see that you leave church and you begin to dance and celebrate why listen when saul met with samuel the bible says as soon as he met with samuel number one the donkey that was missing began to find his way home so restoration is possible not under every condition i hope you know the first thing god restores is time 
because the greatest loss a man can have is the loss of time and i will restore the years he says mm. hallelujah the prophetic is powerful i tell you happy is the man that genuinely encounters a prophetic grace please sit down let me show you one thing about the prophetic and then we'll pray don't tempt me i resist that temptation but not help me all these my people will have to help me now amen and amen and amen ah this thing is on me now praise the name of the lord yes, when elisha said by this time tomorrow he was not giving them a privileged information he was creating what would happen are, are we together now there are two dimensions to the prophetic believers please understand there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic so god by his servant reveals things some you know some you do not know the purpose is to encourage your faith that god is aware of you and your condition and your situation and then to give you guidance but the more superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of the prophetic this is not God giving you a privileged information. He's programming a possibility that had no business happening. Hmm. So when he says by this time tomorrow, he was not revealing what would have happened anyway. Let me tell you how prophecy comes to pass. I was sharing with my people now. When a prophetic word is released, if it is true that it came from God, the first thing that happens is that the Holy Spirit manifests as the spirit of wisdom and it begins to source for the human vessels that must partner with that prophecy to bring it to pass so if i prophesy and say may god open your doors you say amen you have received let me tell you what happens the spirit of wisdom begins to go around lagos there must be an individual he is the producer of that movie he will bring the actors together that makes that word come to pass and how it will happen leave it to his creativity if there is no available actor in nigeria he will go to america south africa and pick a willing vessel but by all means that word must come to pass are we together now so the prophet says you will not see wind you will not see rain yet by a mystery you do not understand because the bible says listen carefully when it has to do with god he said just as you do not know the ways of the wind nor how bones are formed in her that is with child that is how you do not know the ways of god the ways of god are beyond science sometimes it does not conform to logic that is why he's called god hmm. is someone learning the prophetic is powerful i do not know any man who transited seasons especially from the negative to a season of envy and glory without the prophetic coming in yes sir so baby jesus is taken to the temple first place he's taken to and then he meets this strange woman who had been praying for his arrival for over 60 years she holds him and says behold the consolation of israel she never called him a baby then simeon the prophet lifted him and spoke over him your jesus walked under a close heaven for 30 years even as the word until he met this mysterious prophet who came in the spirit and the power of elijah called john because the protocol is that before the day of the lord elijah must proceed elijah always precedes the day of the lord and so jesus would never manifest until elijah precedes him so john comes in the spirit and the power of elijah are we learning now and john looks at him and says behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world he says i am not worthy to untie even the latchet of your shoe and jesus said so far it to be so so that the scripture would be fulfilled and as soon as he baptized him in water your bible my bible says and the heavens opened and there was a voice that spoke from heaven this is my beloved son are we together now in whom i am well pleased and his life changed the holy spirit came upon him acts 10 38 now says how god anointed jesus who anointed jesus but it had to happen at the instance of the prophetic 
why was he not anointed from birth why was he not anointed while he was praying or while he was in the temple it was at the point where he encountered prophet john that that anointing came anointed jesus with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil ladies and gentlemen please hear me i sense in my spirit that as we celebrate these 28 years with the king's court i believe with all my heart that there are people here the truth is that these seasons have actually come to an end the devil wants to lie to you and make you continue in pain that is needless the hymn writer says oh what needless pain we bear mm. romans 8 18 says um how does he put it now it says but our light affliction give it to us please i reckon that the sufferings of this present time someone say this present time so every suffering and every constraint has a timing and when it goes out of the jurisdiction of his timing it becomes warfare you don't sit down and fold your arms and allow negative seasons to continue indefinitely did you hear what i said the bible says after you have suffered a while some of you that timing is too much is inconsistent with the law of seasons your pain has lasted for 10 20 years it's no longer it cannot be the will of god this is not just seasons rotating satan is stopping the other side of the season from coming and the assignment of the prophetic is to come as a midwife to say thus have you come and no further shall you go you believe that yes sir in the name of jesus christ you have to believe that there are many people who have become victims of negative seasons negative seasons they have trusted god they have prayed you have done everything but the last step the prophetic i can tell you my life today is a product of prophetic a, a prophetic push can literally bring to end negative seasons in your life believe me when i tell you this saul would have gone around searching in futility for his father's donkey but the servant told him you know what we've tried we've stretched ourselves let's not waste more time there is a prophet there is a prophet i think it was south africa I was speaking in and i said truly god gave gifts to men i can tell you sincerely god gave gifts to men and you can remain in a situation needlessly whereas with one minute of genuine prophetic declaration you would see our father in the lord stand and say there is somebody here the lord is saying i should tell you as casual as it sounds people say amen and the realm of the spirit stamps it and doors begin to open ah paul and silas stayed in the prison but they knew that negative seasons have an expiry date the moment it was midnight what is midnight the door that connects yesterday and today midnight is the name given to the door that connects your yesterday and today did you hear what i said every yesterday must have an exit door if you've not found it is demonic you better find your exit door don't just find entry alone according to god's program you find entry an exit so if i'm in a season where i'm in the valley of the shadow of death i found the entry door i may not even know how i entered but i keep searching around if i don't find an exit door i call jesus into that situation to be the door he now becomes my passage because he said i am the door anywhere jesus stands becomes the door out of that situation i am the door is someone learning now yes at midnight Paul and Silas said, listen, this is the end of it. We have tried. We have endured for only God knows how many hours. Let's engage the mysteries that get us out of this place. The Bible says Paul and Silas prayed and they sang. It was loud enough. Everyone heard them. Ah, suddenly. Suddenly. King's Court, suddenly. Please hear me. There are three ways that doors open in the life of a man to usher him into new seasons number one is by the use of correct keys the first way a door opens is when you engage the right key not a key are we together now you open doors the door to your vehicle the door to your house when you use the right key the second way doors open according to scripture is by knocking the power of relationships 
when you knock the person at the other side must be willing to open for you so if you don't have a relationship with him you will remain outside are we together the bible says everyone that knocketh, it shall be open to him but the third way does open when the keys don't seem to work and the individuals don't seem to happen learn that from paul and silas the bible says they prayed they sang suddenly my god there was an earthquake watch this now and that when the earthquake came it affected the foundation of the prison and then it says immediately how soon immediately all doors open that one is not a door that just opens by the knob turning you uproot the foundation holding the door so that it gets out of the way because sometimes the door can be open for you but close against your children and there are times you need the door open permanently in a few minutes as i speak someone is not the door you open the foundation holding the door you are carrying it like samson samson removed the city gate and carried it and climbed the mountain to keep it there I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 I say, glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Mm. I sense in my heart that a family, an individual, a business has come to the end of certain negative cycles unfavorable seasons watch this i'm hearing a statement in my spirit and i want us to use it as a prayer point and then i just speak over our lives my goodness i just sense that god is going to blow off this roof in a few minutes watch this the bible tells us that jesus was his, with his disciples and then prophetically he tells them that our brother lazarus sleepeth and they said if he sleepeth is good for him because he's not been well and he said no he's dead and after three days he says come let's go and raise him i'm speaking over someone now and the bible says when they got there martha saw him and said why if you were here earlier our brother lazarus would not be dead and then she made a profound statement and here is the word even now even now even now if i had heard what you are saying now in january i would not prolong this pain till october however even now someone tell yourself even now let the devil hear you even now i've carried the sickness needlessly but even now even now even now even now someone declare let faith rise even now in the name of jesus even now at this 28th anniversary in the presence of worshipers and vessels of honor even now even now even now watch this now even now he says whatever you ask of god and if you think even now does not work ask hezekiah a genuine prophet comes to hezekiah and says put your house in order i am a genuine prophet i have a prophetic word this season that has come will not change it will end with you dying hezekiah said i respect your prophetic ministry go and he turned his face even now he says lord remember hmm. someone is about to prophesy you will be the first prophet of your life say father one more time say father even now show up for me even now rewrite my story even now take me out of negative seasons open your mouth and pray in one minute father even now 
Even now. Even now. Even now. Even now. Someone is praying. Even now. Over my finances. Even now. Over my ministry. Even now. Over my business. Even now. You can change seasons. Even now. You are El Shaddai. The multi-breasted one. Someone pray. Even now. Even now. Even now. At stage four. Even now. You are still the healer. After 12 years being barren. Even now. The changer of seasons. Ah. Pastor Nat. I'm standing here. And I'm just sensing in my spirit. Remember that our chant of this morning. Adonai. 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 Call his name. Adonai. Adonai. Listen. Listen. Adonai. 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 Say. Prophesy. Adonai. 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 Come on. Adonai. 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 Say. Prophesy. Declare. Prophesy. Someone rejoice. Come on. Prophetically, you are finally finding the exit door after 10 years. The exit door appears after 20 years. The exit door from shame to honor, from depression to lifting. Can we chance this one more time? You are the door. Say it again. Father, you are my door. Lead me out of this season to a new season of honor. Open your mouth and pray. You are the door. You are the door. Shabaka doskata bregataka. Adon, the door. Adon, the way. Adon, the truth. Adonai, 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 Adonai,
I'm going to ask Pastor Nat to blast the trumpet. Watch this. Every time there is a sound of the trumpet, there is always a change of season. Yeah. Hallelujah. Every time the sound of the trumpet signifies the end of a season and the beginning of another. When you hear the sound of the trumpet, you become the prophet of your destiny and begin to lead yourself into a triumphant entry in the name of jesus whatever prophetic action you find comfortable some of you may need to walk forward some of you may need to lift your hands in joy but by all means as you hear the sound of the trumpet begin to declare seasons of pain you have come to an end seasons of shame you have come to an end seasons of embarrassment in the name of jesus you believe this go ahead Oh, I decree and declare seasons of shame. You come to an end in the name of Jesus. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, I go forward. 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 I advance into new realms, into new seasons. King's God, prophesy upon yourself. Schedule a triumphant entry out of shame, out of obscurity. Hallelujah. when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream our mouths were filled with laughter and they said among the hidden the lord had done great things for them it says the lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the negev take one minute you are not wasting your time you're leading in the spirit a triumphant entry 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 Adonai 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 hallelujah exodus 14 14 please give it to us exodus 14 14 my god ah. hear me there is a name that God is called. He is not only savior. He is not only deliverer. He is called a mighty warrior. Do you know what that name means? The Bible says, who is this king of glory? It says the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty. And that might is only demonstrated in battle. Hallelujah. That the Lord can stand behind a man as a mighty terrible one the lord can stand behind the destiny defending it with his jealousy did the bible not say jealousy is the rage of a man when you touch the bride of a man you provoke jealousy and the bible calls you the bride of christ this will be your next prayer point ladies and gentlemen i don't know about you but the lord will fight for joshua selman and i will hold my peace Ah, there are battles that are not your own. The Lord will fight for you. Say, Father, arise. Father, arise. Establish victory in my life. Go ahead and pray. Arise. Arise. Hey. Hey.
Hallelujah. 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 Do you believe what is happening here? You see, these are the mysteries of the kingdom. They don't make sense. Just help those under the anointing. It may not make sense to an ordinary person. But I tell you, you are commanding results in the spirit. You will just see that your days unfold with miracles scheduled before you. These are the mysteries of the kingdom. The Bible calls it the hidden wisdom of God ordained for our glory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I have a few minutes. I'm going to speak over your life. I'm going to leave Pastor and the dear woman of God in the next five minutes. They are going to provoke prophetic worship. There is a reason why I'm saying that. You see, I was saying it during the Hallelujah Challenge. It was the celebration and the dance of a small girl that removed the head of a prophet. As prophetic as John was, what warriors could not do? Hallelujah. The prophetic is powerful. The prophetic is powerful, I tell you. The Bible says, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. These sounds are no ordinary sounds. I believe that it's for someone's destiny that God created this combination this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because truly, he gave gifts to men. This God gave gifts to men. And in the next five minutes, as this prophetic mistress lifts songs of worship, whether you are lying down, whether you are, I don't know what you want to do. I leave you with God, your deliverer, God, your maker, God, the changer of times and seasons. Hallelujah. And then after that, I will be praying for you. You're sick in your body. You've been oppressed certain seasons, maybe financial situations. You see, the world does not know the prophetic dimension of thriving in uncertain times. I respect business principles and they are true. I respect economic principles and they are true. But all Samaria, when all fails, the prophetic still works. Hmm. Are we together? Sir, over to you, please. Jehovah is your name. 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 Jehovah. 
Hallelujah. Jeremiah 20, 10 and 11. Please be sensitive. I'm speaking over your life now. Jeremiah chapter 20, 10 and 11. I'll read verse 10 and then you will read 11. For I heard the defaming of many. Fear on every side. Report they say and we will report it. All my familiars watch for my halting, saying, Per adventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him and take our revenge on him. Let a, a, a believing Christian shout, verse 11. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail, they shall be greatly ashamed for they shall not prosper their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten hallelujah can i tell you when you invest time to engage the prophetic in praise in prayer and then receiving prophetic declarations you will marvel and wonder this is how some of us came by the foolishness of the mysteries of the kingdom we ascended these ladders by grace. Listen, for someone, God is saying, just, just embrace the foolishness of the prophetic for a moment. Forget about your prior experiences, perhaps with wrong people or whatever it is. Open up your spirit and believe that in a moment, the story of your life can be rewritten. I want to stand upon the grace of our Father and the Lord, Daddy Gio, and stand upon the grace of the angel over this house pastor ben and i want to make certain prophetic declarations i'm standing here under the corporate anointing with god's people's backing me for someone who has the heart to believe you stand and watch the way seasons move like wind shifting things and changing seasons for you in the name of jesus everything that represents shame reproach in your life I call upon the God of heaven, the one who backs and honors men. May that season come to an end now. May that season come to an end now. May that season come to an end now. Listen, for everyone here, they have asked you, where is your God? May your results answer them. I say it again, may your results answer them. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have turned my morning into dancing and you have turned my sorrow to joy. Let me pray for someone from that prison place. 
in the name of Jesus let an earthquake rattle that prison and cause all doors to be open financial doors open marital doors open doors of fruitfulness be open doors of lifting be open career doors be open in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah the Bible tells us that there was a man in the in scripture called Mordecai they wanted to kill the king one time and Mordecai heard the news and by his intervention the king's life was preserved but the man was not rewarded there are many of you who have been part of the rising of many the stories of many you midwife them into prophetic seasons yet like like joseph they forgot you my bible says that night could not king ahazeros sleep he said bring me the chronicles and they opened it and found there where mordecai saved his life but was not rewarded let me prophesy to someone in the name of jesus the son of the living god for your sake and on this 28th anniversary may the book of remembrance be open 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 in the name of jesus christ are you ready for a prophetic action exodus 14 15 i want to preach and speak according to the word that the lord gave moses and the lord said to joshua selman wherefore criest thou to me speak to the people at the king's court and tell them that they go forward can i prophesy to you go forward go forward go forward go forward i prophesied in business go forward no more backward go forward go forward by the anointing go forward i prophesy go forward go forward go forward speed to your destiny speed to your destiny speed to your destiny go forward as a businessman go forward as a man of god go forward as a student go forward as an administrator go forward in the name of jesus go forward go forward and every